Well, good evening, everyone. Let's call to order our Linwood City Council business meeting for this evening, Monday, May 13th, 2019. And Councilmember Hurst, if you would lead us in the flag salute. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we have the roll call, please? Mayor Smith? Here. Council President Goodwin? Present. Council Vice President Frizzell? Here. Councilmember Sessions? Here. Councilmember Ross? Here. Councilmember Cotton? Happy to be here. Councilmember Hurst? Here. Councilmember Sutton? Hello. Council is present, Mayor. Thank you. Moving on to item 30, the approval of the minutes, Councilmember Cotton. Thank you, Honor. I move the council approve the following minutes. Work session, April 17th, 2019. Business meeting, April 22nd, 2019. Special work session, April 29th, 2019. And work session, May 6th, 2019. Second. Thank you. Are there any changes or amendments? Councilmember Sutton. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in reading the, <coughs> excuse me, in reading the minutes uh, from April 17, uh, line 32, I would like to add um, that I also gave a report uh, regarding the Snohomish County tomorrow, and that would be on line 33. And what page, Councilmember uh, Sutton? 30A. 30A. 30A-2. I'm sorry, what line is it? Not that I found it. It's uh, 33. Okay. So you're adding and Snohomish County tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. It's been a long time since we've been at a business meeting, I feel like. So I have uh, several messages from the mayor tonight. We've had quite a bit of excitement over the past couple of weeks. Linwood turned 60, and we had a series of ribbon cuttings and events to commemorate that. We hosted our annual volunteer recognition celebration. We hosted a joint board and commission meeting and had some great engagement with our advisory board members. And I'd like to just take the opportunity to thank our city staff members uh, for all the work that they did behind the scenes to make sure that all these events and recognitions went off without a hitch. We've been moving forward our race and social equity work. Our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission hosted a great workshop at the annual Step Up Conference, and we had several city staff attend. And just last week, our city's leadership team had an unconscious bias training and we're looking at bringing back this training for hiring managers and frontline staff. Last week, we celebrated two regional service providers. I attended the Child Strive annual luncheon, and they do tremendous work supporting families with young children uh, to succeed. And then we also celebrated the grand opening of the new North Point, Washington. It's actually in Edmonds, but they are a drug rehab facility and uh, we really need their services in our community. And finally, this week, we're celebrating Deputy Chief Brian Stanifer, who, after 31 years of service to the Linwood Police Department, is retiring this Friday. Deputy Chief Stanifer has been an incredible leader, not only in, at the Linwood De uh, Police Department, but for our entire region. He's a true professional, and he is leaving this place better off. And I'll dearly miss him, but wish him the best of luck on the next chapter of his life. So with that, we'll move into our citizen comments. I will take those who have signed up on the citizen comments sheet first. You'll come to the podium, state your name and address, and you'll be afforded three minutes to uh, speak to council and myself. So the first one up is Rosa Antoine. Good evening, Rosa Antoine uh, from the, uh, I want to say shag, but destinations <laughs> up on the hill. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that we met with two gentlemen from the uh, Public Works, 
and we had a really, really good meeting with them. Uh, they came and uh, looked over our, we, our request for a crosswalk, and uh, I think it's going to happen, which is very exciting, and we're all just really happy about that, and there's, it'll take a little while, but uh, thank you for um, sending them over. That's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Greenbaum. I think my address is on file by now. Stephen Greenbaum. Uh, I'll try to do this in three minutes. If not, I'll tag team and come back up later. Uh, I want to talk to you today about something that I witnessed when I was walking around the city of Linwood which is uh, a couple of weeks ago watching uh, some weeds being taken care of by the city of Linwood and spraying on either Roundup or glyphosate or whatever it is that you are, uh, per permutations of that that's going on. Uh, I spoke about this several years ago. Uh, at that point, it, the city of Linwood was going to look into how much they were using, whether they could use less, and the bottom line is it's still using Roundup, and uh, I've sent a couple of articles to a few council members. I'm sure they'll be happy to share them if you wish, uh, about cities that are banning it, counties around the country that are banning it. And I would ask the city of Linwood, I know you have a lot on your plates, this is one more thing, take care of it, to look into it, to get rid of it, and to stop using it on, in public parks, in public walkways, anywhere in the city of Linwood. I would ask you to do this first and foremost for the health and welfare of the citizens of the city of Linwood. If that's not enough incentive, today there was yet another court uh, decision and the decision was in favor of the plaintiffs for two billion dollars. Now, Immediately, everyone said, oh, that'll be cut down. It'll be probably, and, and it will be. It'll cut down from two, two billion to one billion, probably only 500 million. So that may be all that it'll cost the city of Linwood if the city of Linwood continues to use this and someone finally holds the city liable for putting its citizens in jeopardy. But before you even consider that, I would hope you would simply consider the health and welfare of the city of Linwood and ban the use of this weed killer. Now, if you can't figure out what else to do with killing weeds, think of how much it will cost if you don't and you're sued. Uh, people can, you can have uh, citizens, you know, they uh, take a neighborhood, take care of weeds. If you don't want to do that, as was suggested to me, to suggest to you this, this, this evening how I take care of weeds, I take care of weeds by using salt and vinegar, neither of which will kill people or animals or pollute the sound. So I would ask you to look into this and more than look into it because that always can go down a very long, unfortunate road. Act, please, for the welfare of the city of Linwood, act. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak tonight in citizen comments? We have two public hearings, so if you have comments for public hearings, please save it for that time. Ted Heichel. Ted Heichel, 3820, 191st Place Southwest in Linwood for 47 years and four more years an apartment up on uh, 176, so I'm up to 51 years. I wasn't thinking of uh, speaking at this time later in the in the uh, meeting tonight, but uh, first of all, I would like to say Brian Stanifer has been an outstanding member of the Linwood staff, and I certainly, over the years, have known his contributions to the city, and I wish him well in retirement. It's a wonderful thing. You can do a lot more in retirement, however, than you ever thought you could. I 
was of the opinion that the city of Linwood had banned Roundup for use in our parks. And I'm not sure what the gentleman saw being sprayed, but I do know, for instance, on 40th Avenue West, we have ditches and we have tons of dandelions coming into bloom, which my younger son, when he was very young, used to call figgy fezzes. So figgy fezzes are starting to blow up the hill into all of our yards, causing a problem. The other thing, I was looking at some of the old budgets of the city of Linwood, and I noticed that uh, in the 2015-2016 budget, there was $19 million set aside for fire service for the biennium. In the 17-18 budget, it was raised over 25%, up to $24 million. I'm not sure what that $5 million extra was for the next two years. I don't think it was particularly staff. But now, with $7 billion worth of property value in the city of Linwood, the fire service is going to receive $14 million for one year. So in other words, a biennium of $28 million. And my question is, is the city of Linwood going to receive $28 million worth of service from the fire department now? I'll leave you with that question. Others who'd like to speak this evening? All right, thank you. We'll move on to our presentations and proclamations. And as Councilmember Cotton moves down to the podium, he will be reading the proclamation for Bike Everywhere Month. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Proclamation of the City of Linwood Recognition of Bike Everywhere Month. Whereas the bicycle is an economical, healthy, convenient, and environmentally sound form of transportation, both for commuting and errands, and an excellent tool for recreation and enjoyment of Washington State's scenic beauty, and whereas throughout the month of May, the residents of Linwood and its visitors will experience the joys of bicycling through educational programs, community events, community rides, or by simply getting out and going for a ride. And whereas the City of Linwood staff will be participating in the Bike Everywhere Day on Friday, May 17th, and Bike to Health South County Rides organized by the Cascade Bicycle Club and starting in Linwood, Malik Terrace, and Edmonds and throughout the summer. And whereas Cascade Bicycle Club Washington Bikes, Schools, Parks and Recreation Departments, Police Departments, Public Health Districts, Hospitals, Companies, and Civic Groups will be promoting bicycling through the month of May 2019. And whereas Linwood's Healthy Communities Action Plan identifies an active living goal to make it easy and safe for residents to physically be physically active daily. And whereas the Linwood, Linwood is actively working to develop a complete streets policy that ensures public streets provide space for all users, motor vehicles, pedestrians, and bicyclists. And whereas Linwood is working collaboratively with neighboring cities to complete missing links of the bicycle network throughout South Snohomish County through the Bike to Health program. And whereas Cascade Bicycle Club and many other groups mentioned above are also promoting greater public awareness of bicycling and bicycle safety and education to reduce collisions, injuries, and fatalities, and improve health and safety for everyone on the road. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Mayor and City Council of the City of Linwood, do hereby proclaim May 2019 as Bike Everywhere Month in Linwood, and call on, this, call on all community members to join us in this special observance. Signed today, Mary Nicholas Smith and Benjamin Goodwin, City Council President. Thank you. Is there anyone here to receive that proclamation? All right. Thank you, Council Member Cox. Thank you, Mayor. I would just note, too, I think uh, Verdant Health is also one of our good partners on some of the Bike to Health stuff, too. So thank you for to Verdant Health if you're out there. Thank you. Our next proclamation is Historic Preservation Month. And Council Member Hurst will move to the podium. <laughs> Uh, 
Hi, so I'm going to read a uh, proclamation on Historic Preservation Month. Is there anybody from the History uh, and Heritage Board that's here? Or? Want to get her? Okay. Okay. Well, I'll just. Let me tell you a little bit. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I do. I have a master's in history from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. <laughs> BA in history from UW. Oh, here she goes. Annie and I, we were just talking about historic preservation, so if nobody shows up, you're going to come up here. Because <laughs> we were talking about it. See? Uh, no, not that, because of the... <laughs> no, I don't... I'm digging myself deeper. <laughs> All right, like here we are. Would you like to join Council Member Hurst at the podium? Chris? Chris, you get to be yep. with me. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> okay. So, I will read the proclamation, and then if you want to say something afterwards, that would be great. All right. So, proclamation, City of Linwood, recognition of Historic Preservation Month. Whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds, and whereas historic preservation is a valuable tool that helps to maintain our community character, foster local pride, revitalize neighborhoods, and enhance overall livability, and whereas each year in the summer months, Linwood's History and Heritage Board and our partners at Heritage Park host History and Heritage Days to highlight local history, and whereas we recognize the importance to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by the individuals dedicated to preserving the tangible characteristics of the heritage that has helped shape us all as people. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the mayor and city council of the city of Linwood, do hereby proclaim May 2019 as Historic Preservation Month in Linwood and call on all community members to join us in this special observance. Signed, Nicola Smith, Mayor, and Benjamin Goodwin, City Council President. And Chris, if you want to speak a little bit. Sure. Hi, uh, Chris Donovan. I'm History and Heritage Board. I'd just like to thank the council and the community for all of the support we've gotten, uh, especially Shannon. Um, and let you know there are spaces available on the History Board if anyone's interested. And even if you're not, but you'd like to learn a little bit more about Linwood's history, Come on down to Heritage Park, and you might be surprised at how interesting it is. So, thank you. Thank you. You get to go up front. It's on the podium. <laughs> Glad you made it, Chris. And our third proclamation for this evening is Arts Education Month, and Councilmember Ross is coming to the podium. Good evening. Okay, good. This is a proclamation of the City of Linwood recognition of Arts Education Month. Whereas the arts, including dance, music, theater, and visual arts, as well as literary arts, is a core as a core subject in Washington, is defined as a core subject in Washington. Uh, as a core subject in Washington, states definition of basic education and considered an essential component of the complete and balanced education for all students. Whereas learning in and through the arts enables students to develop critical thinking and problem solving skills, imagination and creativity, discipline, alternate ways to communicate and express feelings and ideas, and cross-cultural understanding which supports academic success across the curriculum as well as personal growth outside of the classroom. And whereas imagination and creativity are increasingly understood as critical capabilities needed for success in the 21st century workforce. And whereas the arts can transform our schools into havens of creativity and exploration places where students want to learn, teachers want to teach, and all members of the learning community are more engaged and motivated. 
And whereas high quality school-based arts education involves a wide range of partners, including school boards, district administrators, educators, parents, artists, and art organizations, community members, and local businesses and organizations whose collective endeavors towards equitable, equitable provision of arts learning for all students, we celebrate and promote. And whereas we applaud the efforts and dedication of arts education and advocates around the state, and we call for school and community leaders to continue to broaden and strengthen their commitment to provide arts education for every student in every school. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Mayor and City Council of the City of Linwood, do hereby proclaim May 2019 as Arts Education Month in Linwood and call on all community members to join us in this special observation. Robert? Um, I'm Robert Guchek, part of the Arts Commission. And the Arts Commission thanks Mayor Smith and the City Council for recognizing the value of arts education, both in the schools as well as in the entire community. And we invite you as part of this community in Linwood to celebrate the Explore event that we have in June 13th with a artist reception. Thank you. Thank you. Photo? All right, thank you. Moving on to item 70, are there any written communications or petitions? No. It's uh, time for council comments and announcements, and I'd like to start with council member sessions this evening. Thank you. My screen went dark for some reason. Hold on just a sec here. Okay. Thank you. I love it when I get to go first. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, everybody in the audience. We love to see you, see you when you're here. I just wanted to add on a little bit to what the mayor said. There's so many good things going on. And just particularly uh, last Wednesday, we had the joint boards and commissions meeting, and uh, we did that um, last year as well. Actually, might have been the year before, yeah. Three years, third year. And it's, um, it's just so beneficial. It's like one of my favorite meetings of all um, to get all these stakeholders together and people who obviously really care because they spend their volunteer time being part of the city and really actively working for us voluntarily and uh, we get so much out of it so thanks for continuing to do that and just especially thank you to the staff um, who take a lot of good care um, to put that together and then I want to remind everybody that Memorial Day is this month it's on Monday May 27th and uh, Linwood has an annual event at 11 a.m. at our Veterans Park next to the library please join us and um, also, I'm thankful for Deputy Chief Brian Sanifer and um, looking forward. He has a, an event on uh, the 15th, Wednesday the 15th, a goodbye, a, a small goodbye. And uh, he's just, um, he has contributed a lot to not only the police department, um, but also um, crossed over to a lot of the different um, sections of the police or of the city um, not to mention like was mentioned um, regionally um, and uh, and he uh, he's actually the person who hired me too for the police department so uh, it's uh, I'm happy for him in his next chapter 
and just wanted to publicly thank him for his um, devoted, committed service to our community. Thank you. Councilmember Cotton. You never know, clockwise or counterclockwise. Well, That's good. Keep you on your edge. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I would just echo um, Deputy Chief Stanifer. Um, I had the honor of serving on the Snow Comm board with him, uh, which if you didn't know, we, Snohomish County, we used to have two 911 call centers and dispatch agencies, Snow Comm and Snow Pack. And uh, in 2017, uh, we merged those two agencies into one, which eliminated a 24 second call transfer time that uh, came to light during the uh, very tragic Michael Teo um, high school shooting wasn't at the high school, but it was involved some high schoolers um, uh, that really brought to light that call transfer. And Brian was really instrumental in uh, working behind the scenes to eliminate those call transfers and merging those agencies. So um, George Hurst and I were part of that, the mayor and several staff members were part of that, but Brian was definitely one of the, the champions regionally that got that done. So um, so thanks, thank you, Brian, uh, you're, you've done good work here. Um, the other thing, I, I didn't really have anything prepared tonight, but just in response to some of the comments, um, I believe, as I was checking back through my notes, one of the issues with the pesticides was we had a miscalibrated spray head on one of our automatic sprayers, but I wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea um, sometime before our August break to have uh, Director Franz come back and just report on our uh, gallons of pesticide consumed for the city because I know that we tabulate that and maybe let us know as a council what the fiscal impact of moving away from a, a glidal phosphate type pesticide would be. I know that he mentioned a couple of times what the cost would be to maybe burn or use other methods. So maybe it would be a good opportunity to hear from him because there's, there's an impact I understand from a labor standpoint. So uh, that'd be my only ask and those are my few comments. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Sutton. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if you, any of you um, have gone out to the Little Leaguers and watched them play ball and, or anything on that order, but they really are a wonderful little group of people. And uh, so I spent a little time with, at the Lindell Park um, watching uh, family members and four-legged members um, enjoying a wonderful, wonderful day. And it really was a wonderful day. And so um, I just want to uh, encourage all of you to remember that we do have youth in our parks and just to be there to support them. Thank you. Council President Goodwin. Thank you. I just want to welcome everyone uh, and thank all of the community members that have come out and continue to come out uh, to inform the city council, to inform policy, uh, and to help keep us accountable. Uh, I appreciate the thoughts and ideas that come to us and that help us as a council to really make sure that we're doing what our jobs are, uh, which really for the most part is policy making and making sure that the policies and those things that we do uh, that really affect all of us in the community are the things that are best for the community. So I appreciate, as, as I know all the council members do because whenever we have people that come in and are willing to speak to share their thoughts and concerns uh, there's always gratitude from us to you for doing that so thank you and i the one ask is that you continue to do so and continue to come come to us and let us know your concerns and worries and and what it is that we're doing wrong and especially those things that you think we're doing right those are helpful as well so thank you vice president frizzell I would like to uh, echo some words that have already been talked about, about getting out in our parks. On Saturday, I went out to the Cascade Bike Club gathering, and we had seven members from the city of Linwood, and they gave us all kinds of advice and instruction on how to ride the right way and the wrong way, and, and uh, uh, just lots of general information and some very specific information about our parks and, and uh, making sure we observe the laws of the road. So I would encourage us to get on our bicycles and, and get out there. We have a wonderful interurban trail that I rode a couple weeks ago and uh, it's just beautiful out there. So get out, just get out. And uh, 
go out there and bike and walk and play and participate. The city has a number of events going on that are organized this, this summer and there's always unorganized events as well. So I just encourage all of us to get out. Um, on a much more serious note, uh, President Goodwin and I serve on the uh, South County Fire Regional Authority Commission Board. And uh, we heard this morning of the passing of one of our commissioners. Richard Schrock has been ill for quite some time. And uh, it's with deep sadness that uh, we express condolences to his family. He was a master at legislation and he was instrumental in getting the SIRS uh, radio system up and going and, and uh, working alongside folks. And uh, sometimes um, it, it was a rocky road. It, it wasn't all smooth, but he stuck with it and, and uh, our communities are better for it. And uh, we'll pass on future news as far as a memorial when we get that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Ross. Yes, uh, several things have already been mentioned this evening. I do want to remind everyone, those of you who are here, you can see the wonderful display in the lobby of all of the eggs from this year's Explore. Uh, we will be having a reception in June where you'll actually be able to buy some of the pieces that are out there. They're all incredible. And if you haven't been to City Hall, please make an effort to come and take a look at them because they are absolutely wonderful. And each one is unique and an actual work of art that you could buy. So thank you. And Councilmember Hurst. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Let me first talk about... Um, a week or so ago, the, the Veterans Museum had its second anniversary, and uh, it was great to see that uh, some of the displays were put out into the center portion that got to spread out a little more, and, it, and it's just uh, apparent that, you know, that museum needs a bigger space, so I hope we can go forward on that someday. Um, <clears throat> this week is the uh, Snow 911 board meeting that I'm part of, and um, as Councilmember Cotton mentioned uh, this: the 911 Snow Snohomish 911 was created through the consolidation of Snowcom and Snowpack, and not only did it result in vastly improved service, but now we're finding that it's actually resulting in cost savings. And so Linwood is finding um, uh, reduced reduced assessments uh, from the 911 service. Then th this year, SIRS, the Snohomish Emergency Radio System, merged with Snohomish 911. And again, I was just in a finance meeting uh, last week, and initially it looks like, again, there'll be savings uh, because of this con consolidation. And so um, not only does this improve service, but it's great to show that we have a, a cost savings. Um, in fact, Linwood's not the only agency that's finding savings. The vast majority of all the agencies serve. There's like 52 of them, I think, served by 911, and serves, uh, find savings. Um, so yeah, I was, um, I didn't know about Dick Schrock's passing away and he was an important uh, person in educating me as far as uh, fire uh, commissioner um, board uh, work and also he served on the RFA planning committee with the mayor and myself and Councilmember Cotton and so he, uh, and he, he is actually also serving or he was on the um, Snohomish uh, Emergency Radio Advisory Board that I'm on also, which is uh, the board that's going to advise on uh, how to uh, spend the money that's set aside for the new radio system that's going to happen. So he, he will be sorely missed. Um, I would also um, like to express my thanks to uh, D.C. Stanifer, though, for all his work, uh, not only for the consolidation of uh, Snowcom Snowpack, but he worked on the SERS consolidation and uh, again like it's been noted he leaves Linwood a better place and I really appreciate him thank you thank you we'll move on to item 90 this is business items and other matters 90.1 is our unanimous consent agenda and councilmember Ross would you please I will do the duties any council member want to remove anything from the consent agenda no seeing none 
The following items are on the unanimous consent agenda. Item A, contract Teamsters Local 763, authorize the mayor to sign the labor agreement between the city of Linwood and the Teamsters Local 763. Item B, consultant contract supplement 196 Street Southwest Improvements, authorize the mayor to enter into and, exec and execute a contract supplement with contract land and staff to provide additional property acquisition services in the amount not to exceed $60,000, sales tax does not apply. And item C, voucher approval, approved claims and payroll in the amount of $3,722,137.18 and $1,170,539.15 respectively. Thank you, our unanimous consent agenda will be approved as read. We're off and running on item 90.2. We have two public hearings this evening. The first one is on city center updates. So let me get to my script. So this is our public hearing uh, with regard to city center updates. It's 90.2A on our agenda. And at this time, the city council and I will conduct a public hearing on the topic of the city center updates. Thank you for attending and participating this evening. The purpose of public hearings is to allow the public to express their views on matters under consideration by the city council. Citizen input is one of many ways that we advance Linwood's vision for an engaged citizenry and responsive government. Decisions will not be made until after citizens have had the opportunity to share their views. The matter of making amendments to the city center design guidelines and LMC chapter 21.60 city center is legislative in nature and common rules for legislative public hearings apply. Public hearings must be fair and free of conflicts of interest. Before we start the proceedings, and this also applies to myself, does any council member have any conflict of interest regarding this matter? Thank you. So now the public hearing is officially open. The sequence of tonight's public hearing will be as follows. City staff will give an oral report that summarizes the matter at hand. The city council may ask clarifying questions specifically related to staff's presentation or the written information provided. Members of the audience will be invited to come to the lectern to share information you wish the city council to consider. I'll first call from speakers call for speakers from the sign-up sheet that was lo located outside the chamber's entrance. Next, I will call for speakers who have not signed up. After the public testimony portion of this hearing, I will invite city staff to offer clarifying information responsive to the public comments. Then the city council may ask clarifying questions of the speakers specifically related to their testimony. Citizens' responses must be made from the lectern. I may allow members of the public to return to the lectern to share new information that was not offered initially. This will only be allowed when circumstances suggest that additional information is needed to fulfill the purpose of the hearing. After each citizen has had the opportunity to speak and the city council is ready to begin its deliberation, I will close the public hearing. Occasionally public hearings are reopened or held to a future meeting. And after the hearings close, the city council can begin its deliberation and ultimately determine what action should be taken. Alternatives available to our council include approve the matter as written, approve the matter as amended by city council, discontinue further consideration or decline to take action, and finally continue the public hearing or council deliberation to a future meeting. As mayor, my role is to facilitate the hearing and council's deliberation. It's important that public hearings are conducted in a manner that's equitable to all. We'll use the following ground rules for this public hearing. Written minutes and an electronic recording of this meeting are being made. When coming to the lectern, speakers should state their name and address. Please speak into the microphone so that others can hear you. Comments may only be made from the lectern. Only one person may speak at a time. Speakers will be allowed up to three minutes to share their views. I may adjust the order of speakers when doing so supports the purpose of this hearing. Everyone is asked to respect opinions that differ from yours and to help ensure members of the audience are not intimidated or discouraged from expressing their views. 
The purpose of this hearing is to receive citizen input. It's not the time for back and forth discussion or for debate. This public hearing is open and I will now ask senior planner Ashley Winchell to provide an overview of the topic at hand. Good evening. So uh, before you today are updates to our, oh, and this is Carl Almgren. He's our city center program manager and he'll be here if there's any specific questions about city center. Um, he's, he's available for questions and an additional input to this presentation. <laughs> So um, what's before you today, um, there's a work session last week and so this is the public hearing for that work session to go over the changes to the city center design guidelines and the city center um, chapter 2160 of the zoning code. So the design guidelines that uh, regulate what buildings look like and how sites are developed and then the zoning code that has to do with things like permitted uses, um, building height, setbacks and things like that. So um, moving forward, again, this is the area that's within the city center. So essentially 194th Street to the north, I-5 to the east and south, and 48th Street to the west. So the entire area in yellow is zoned city center, and anything zoned city center is regulated by um, the chapter 2160 and the city center design guidelines. So uh, just to quickly go over how this is all regulated again, I know this looks very familiar um, from last week, but um, the city center sub area plan defines the community vision. And so that's what put to what essentially um, or put together the framework for the section of the zoning code and for the city center design guidelines. The zoning code again, it's what regulates the community vision. So um, it provides the regulatory framework to meet the goals of the city center sub area plan. And then the city center design guidelines promote the character defined within the community vision. So it gets at um, what the city center should look like to meet the goals of the city center. Uh, just to quickly go over how we've got here, um, we've had two developments completed to date in the city center, the city center apartments and the shag um, uh, or now destination senior living. And so um, one of the things we did as we came up with what changes we'd like to see to the city center design guidelines is we reviewed these buildings and tried to find where we, we hit the mark and where we missed the mark and if we could change some of our regulations to make sure that we don't miss the mark moving forward. And so um, what we got into was changes in setbacks, materials, um, locations of gateways and things along those lines. So last week you all provided some um, feedback and I just wanted to note that feedback and, and what we've changed or just identify um, some of, uh, wanted to point out some of the things that were brought up that are, are covered in our guidelines. So first there was a reference to the Dark Skies Ordinance. While our code doesn't specifically reference the Dark Skies Ordinance, it does reference um, LMC 2117, which is site lighting, and that was written using the model Dark Skies Ordinance. So it's the um, implementation of that ordinance. So that is covered in there. And then um, there was discussion about the one-story kiosks um, associated with a park. And so we added that the one-story kiosk must also be approved by a development agreement. So that way we do have some ability to make sure that that one-story kiosk is continuing the goals of the city center. Um, so that was something that was added. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over how these are regulated again. Again, there weren't that many changes from last week to this week, so the, the, the presentation is essentially the same. Um, but uh, we, the site design standards really regulate how the site itself is designed. It doesn't get into the building, but it gets into the sidewalks, the parking areas, the landscaping, and those things. So like we discussed last week, we added some allowances to have a small drive aisle in front of certain types of residential uses, um, recognizing with Uber and Amazon and all of the deliveries that are happening um, that there are vehicles that could potentially block traffic. And so we wanted to provide some allowances to get um, those vehicles off the street um, and, and make sure that we're keeping traffic moving and that people are able to get the services they need. Um, 
we do understand that city center is still very car oriented and it's going to take a while for us to get to that sweet spot. And so we need to make sure that we're accommodating all modes of transportation. Um, we also have uh, provisions in here that have to do with sidewalk cafes, um, parking lot screening, um, different things along those lines, landscaping. Um, we want to make sure that when people are moving through city center that there's a character throughout that our auto uses are well screened and that we are making sure when we start adding things like sidewalk cafes and things like that that we aren't creating um, issues for uh, handicap access or for people walking in large groups through the sidewalk. We want to make sure that pedestrian traffic is flowing and so we've made minor changes that we think will improve that. And then we've also looked at our gateway standards and we're trying to focus on our higher quality gateway um, features versus um, some of the, I wouldn't say lower quality, but easier to meet. So right now it's a, it's a toolbox. And so what we want to change it to is really focusing on getting at our gateways art or um, water features or monuments versus landscaping and lighting, which is already required. We wanted to make sure that there was one piece that really defined our gateway intersections. And so we're focusing on that versus having kind of a toolbox of some um, lower end treatments. We want to make sure that those gateways are really focused on. So that's a quick summary of what the design standards do. And um, all of the changes that we have made are really focusing on strengthening those design standards. As I mentioned last week, we also added allowances for certain types of fencing and things like that. Um, when the city center design guidelines were written, there weren't necessarily as many allowances for when you're abutting residential, what kind of screening you can have, or dog parks, um, You know, what kind of fencing can you have for a dog park. Um, play areas and things like that. The bulk of our changes are in the building design standards. Um, one of our biggest focuses was on materials and um, our current design standards essentially just say high quality materials, but it's super subjective and we wanted to really um, get into what materials we wanted to see on what part of the building. And so we went to Bothell, we went to Redmond, we looked at national examples, we um, went to as many neighborhoods as we could uh, to see how materials were being used and how we think materials should be used in Linwood. And so we wanted to make sure, one, that, that peer cities are getting the materials that we want to see, and then two, what um, materials do we think would have the biggest impact on the overall character? And so focusing on masonry on the ground level, so things like brick and stone and certain types of uh, concrete treatments, and then also making sure that uh, hardy panel is a very popular material, and we want to make sure that we're not getting just a lot of hardy panel, and so giving some allowances to make sure that we're getting a mix of materials so we don't end up with just hardy panel buildings all over city center. And in case anyone doesn't know, hardy panel is the flat kind of eight by four sheets. Um, there's a lot of it on the city center apartments. It can be done really well and it can also be done in a way that's really flat and so we just want to make sure that we're focusing on getting it done right instead of getting it done easy. Um, some of our other changes just strengthening some of our um, transparency requirements and then again adding allowances for uses that are um, private in nature so things like doctor's offices, daycares, gyms, things like that. Um, strengthening some of our entry requirements, making sure that there's at least one focal entry on every building, and then some um, requirements for smaller entries. Uh, one thing we talked about last week was really strengthening the base, middle, and top. It's a common theme in architecture that good architecture has a base, middle, and top, and so we've provided a toolbox for designers to use as they design buildings to make sure that they are following those um, those basic principles and with the hope that we do get high quality architecture. Um, the toolboxes are, are um, fairly flexible and large so that way architects have that ability to design in their vision and, and, and developers can use that as well but um, really focusing on making sure that we are keeping those standards. And then I, again, the um, convention center is on here because it's a really good example of the kind of architecture and buildings we'd like to see continued in city center. Um, we also added some provisions for our parking garages just to make sure that um, 
parking garages are well screened and well designed in city center. Finally, we made some changes to the actual zoning code. Uh, those changes focus on making sure that we're getting as much building at the street line as, or at the right of way line as possible. And so we added some allowances or some requirements for frontage um, based on the size of the lot. And then there are some kind of landlocked parcels in city center. And so we made sure that those landlocked parcels, they can't provide frontage because they don't have frontage. And so we made sure that we recognized um, those sorts of buildings. We also had some provisions that were overly um, restrictive. We had uh, a requirement that the whole ground floor of the building be occupiable space, which meant that there couldn't be any back of house features or parking or anything like that on the ground level. And so we just wanted to provide a percentage that had to be active um, because it's hard to anticipate what a building may need based on the site or based on the, the uses inside. And so we went to a 60% active use on the ground floor, which would give 40% for storage, parking, those sorts of things. It would also have to be designed and screened in a way that meets the guidelines, but it, it gives um, a little bit more flexibility to make sure that that it's not so restrictive that it's causing them to need a variance or some sort of waiver to the requirements. And then finally, um, the document which is attached to um, the ordinance is, um, we made sure to pull in a lot of pictures and make it very easy to use and very graphic. That would conclude my presentation of the changes before you all today. If there's um, any questions or anything, I'm here to answer those. Thank you, Ashley. <clears throat> Does any member of city council have a question to clarify information provided by Ashley's presentation or in the written materials that you have? Councilmember Ross. Ashley, you might not be able to answer this off the top of your head, but ha have you gotten any feedback that this is gonna cause more expensive development and people are gonna be less likely to do it? Or is this just part of operating a development business? We have shared this with two different development groups and neither have specifically voiced that concern. We did sit down with one of those and kind of talk about what mm -hmm. we're doing and make changes based on their feedback because we definitely don't want to stop development. Um, we do though understand that sometimes a uh, higher quality development might have a higher cost and so we're trying to balance making sure we're not making it too expensive mm -hmm. but also making sure that we're getting buildings that will last and are attractive and make city center somewhere people want to be. Excellent, thank you. Councilmember Hurst. Great, thank you. I, I asked this uh, last Monday, but I just want to make sure, because a lot of these changes are more technical, architectural changes that, uh, you know, I, I haven't studied <laughs> entirely. As we know, I, I'm a history major, what do I know? Um, but, uh, you know, I just want to make clear that you know, none of these changes are specific to a developer's request? I mean, no. okay. No, these are all, um, I'd call some of them lessons learned and some of them are things that, you know, as we started going through the code and we're getting more development pressures, realizing that we may need to create some flexibility um, or um, anticipate that we wanna make sure that we're holding all the developers to the, a higher standard. Okay. Then the other uh, question I have, and the slide's not up here, but it's in our, our packet, and it, it goes to the uh, streets that are involved in the city center. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I just think that uh, I want to be aware that I think 194th is really problematic as far as being part of the city center, because just because I think the cost of right away, punching it all the way through 30 to 36th, and also, um, if we do that, we are dividing the uh, public facility district that the convention center sits on, and, and that's, a, that's also a problem. So I just kind of would like folks to be aware that at least I'm concerned about it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Other council questions? All right. Moving on, are there any written materials or correspondence that has not yet been distributed to council? Now I'll invite members of the audience to come forward to speak, starting with those who signed up, and nobody signed up. So is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak this evening? 
Annie? Uh, Annie Lyman, 1950 140th Avenue. And um, I'm sorry I missed the workshop. It sounds like there was a lot of valuable in, in information given. But I didn't hear anything tonight about safety, personal safety. And I am quite concerned about 40th on the fire trucks and the police access to my particular residence because there is no safe place for the fire trucks to park and still allow that one lane of uphill traffic to come by. And so I missed the discussion. I'm sorry about that. But if there's some clarification about that, I think that's a really important issue. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Greenbaum? Steven Greenbaum. Stephen Greenbaum, uh, and my, these are just questions because, as you said, I wasn't here in all of this. Uh, the only reason I'm here now is because I spoke earlier, and just a quick couple of questions, and if the questions aren't relevant, I'm happy. But if they are relevant, I'd ask you to consider them. Uh, I didn't hear, uh, and of course, these are all updates, so I'm hoping that you have taken into account ecological viability and if you haven't that this needs to be addressed uh, one of the things as you may remember is a few years ago uh, we all got together and agreed that Linwood would abide by the uh, Paris climate accords uh, and I want to make sure and hope that we are doing that in this development and that always remember, and this is something that's on my mind because this is what I talked about in my sermon last Saturday, uh, posterity awareness. We're not just building for now. We're building for our kids and grandkids. And if there are ecological problems that are coming either because there's so much, you know, so much, as, as I look at it, impermeable <coughs> service uh, is this. <coughs> Have we taken, and again, I'm asking, I don't know. Have we taken into account uh, how we deal with water, how we deal with making sure that there are trees and things are working so that environmentally so that not only is it working now for the city of Linwood and providing good space now, but that, uh, and I, 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 f I feel honored, I'm older than Linwood. <laughs> Uh, and thank you for making this month all about me. I remember I was uh, old folks month. But if you can please just be sure that you are being environmentally responsible and taking into ecological, uh, sort of, and if you are, terrific. And if you aren't, I'd ask you to, to consider that before taking any votes that, that nail this down. Thank you. Thank you. Ted Heichel? Ted Heigl, 3820, 191st Place, Southwest in Linwood. And uh, I would salute Mr. Greenbaum, and I would join him since I turn 81 on Wednesday. I really appreciated in the document that was online the quote, these changes respond to lessons learned from previous development. That's something government needs to proclaim to the citizens. And hopefully something like a 0.9 parking space for every apartment in a senior apartment building was inadequate and was so stated by staff earlier this year. There were a few lines that bugged me. Quote, the community development director may approve, the community development director may grant deviations, the director may deviate from this standard, the community development director is authorized to determine. These are all things that are not 
nailed down in your document, and in my opinion, they should be. Otherwise, you are giving power to one staff member to make major changes in what should be the city council's decision. And, and I, I think you need to do that. One comment I would have about what was online, the pictures that were in the document, and the do document, if I recall, was something like 50 pages long. Most of the pictures online seem to be multifamily buildings. And I am deeply concerned that we're going down that road again, that with a light rail station, you're going to have massive multifamily housing and you're forgetting what we did when we put in, what we said when we put in the original city center zoning back, what was it, 2005? And we said, we want buildings, office buildings, with higher paying jobs, with white collar jobs, so that we change the mix of our employees in the city from minimum wage jobs in retail to something that could sustain a person who is going to live in the city. $15 an hour, even if we got that high, you're talking about, about $30,000 a year, and nobody can buy a house in Linwood making $30,000 a year. That should be part of what you're doing when you make these upgrades in what you're asking the buildings to look like, but what they function for, and that is better paying jobs in our community. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mayor, um, City Council, my name is Maria Abercrombie and my residence is 19501 uh, 40th Avenue um, West. I live right here at the Destinations building. Um, a couple of months in February, we had an incident at our building where um, four floors had to be evacuated in the southeast corner. Apartments had to be evacuated. The fire department came out because carbon monoxide um, gas was coming into our apartments. And this was part of the design of the building in which um, for concern for the aesthetics on the outside um, blocked somehow impaired the proper venting of the combustion of a, a, boiler, a boiler that was down in the garage. So I would ask that in the consideration of the design of the building that that be, you know, that's a safety for the residents in any building. Um, and uh, they had to remove that nice, beautiful plate, which I'm sure was very costly. And now what sticks out on the side of the building are these huge, white PVC pipes, which are, you know, for our safety. I'm thankful for that. But I'm sure that was not part of the original design. Um, so that needs to really be taken into consideration, is that the outside also take into consideration safety and, and proper venting. Thank you. Yes. Abercrombie, A-B-E-R-C-R-O-M-B-I-E. Are there others who'd wish to speak tonight? All right, staff, would you wish to offer clarifying information in response to the citizen testimony? Yeah, Carl and I will share some of those responses. So um, the first one to 40th and, and the fire truck access. So um, we have several different documents that regulate what happens in city center. And so we have our streetscape plans, which regulate the width of the streets and the sidewalks and the plantings. And so um, these documents really regulate private development. I know that there are some, um, we might be looking at documents moving forward and making sure that we're operating from the same set of maps. And so there might be some consideration in the future of what changes with street widths and things like that. But tonight, this wouldn't cover anything on public right of way. It would only cover private development. Um, for ecological viability, that's something that we've been talking about 
for citywide and, and green building standards and things like that. Um, it's something that we'll, we really want to make sure when we do it, we get it right. Um, there's a lot of complexity to some of those, but I'll let Carl talk a little bit about what we do have in place. So one of the things we have in place is the multifamily tax exemption, which uh, allows builders to receive a property tax reduction over a certain period of time, provided that one of the things that they do is enter into a development agreement with the city, as well as they build their, they design their building to be designed to lead silver status. That doesn't ha necessarily have to be certified, but it has to be designed to those levels. So that's one way that we're incorporating green building designs into private development through incentivization and meeting those needs. Um, one of the things about these design standards is it doesn't necessarily prohibit those uses, and it does provide some uh, discretion to be able to utilize different uh, opportunities in the future uh, through the community development director's uh, discretion um, through uh, those uh, proposed projects. Yeah, and, and then just for stormwater or anything like that, every project's uh, reviewed under whatever the current stormwater standard, standards are to make sure that they're retaining on site and not overloading any of our systems. Um, of course, there are, there are requirements for landscaping and street trees and things along those lines to make sure that we are getting uh, greenery in city center. And a lot of our focus on higher quality materials is because we do want these buildings to last and we want them to stay for a while and we want people to love city center and love the buildings in city center. And so that was one of our big focuses on materials is to make sure that we're building construction that will last and has a, a visual lasting quality. Um, some of the, uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion about parking and it's another thing we've talked about in our office and so um, we acknowledge that there is a need to look at, at changes to parking but we wanna again make sure that we get parking right in Linwood and make sure that we get parking right in city center and parking is a super complex, um, you know, getting the ratios right and not throwing developments off because of that and so um, that's something we'll probably be looking at in the future but not necessarily with these changes. Um, it's also something that we're aware of what that parking requirement did with in that area and so working with developers to make sure that they're providing enough parking. Um, let's see, the, the city development director deviations is very standard in all of our design guidelines and so we don't um, necessarily grant those you know, often, but there have been opportunities where maybe there's um, some sort of utility underneath a planting area, and so the number of street trees they can provide, um, they need to provide six and they can only provide four because the trees may interfere with the utilities that are underground. Those are some of the sorts of things that we've deviated in the past or, um, you know, these design guidelines may not encompass everything that could happen and someone might bring us something that's really good that we, we can deviate from these standards. So the city development director, um, it, I would say how it's, it's worked in the past is it's while the director grants the deviation, it's more of a collaborative approach where we talk about it as a staff to make sure that we're all in agreement that we're, we're still getting something good. So um, there are some standards in the um, project design review chapter to um, d determine if that deviation is warranted. Um, uh, some of the comments discussed the use of the multifamily images and the extent of them. That's our responsiveness to some of the lessons learned as, as well as the responsiveness to the region where we're seeing a specific type of construction pattern occurring around light rail stations. So the concerns with using those images is to provide better guidance to development coming in. Uh, the city center does look for office opportunities as well as mixed use. And the planned action ordinance that the city council adopted identifies certain levels of where we expect to see uh, commercial uses as well as a, a total number of units. So we are looking for that balance as we're moving forward. But again, those images are really to help highlight what Linwood is looking for in the city center related to these design standards. And then having to do with the interior and exterior of the building, um, you know, that's, I don't know if that's an oversight in, in a building review or something got built differently than what was in the, but, but that's something we're, we're very aware of and that's something too where deviations can come into play where 
there maybe needs to be a pipe coming out in a certain area and we can work with them on screening and those sorts of things. So, um, you know, it's something that we're very aware of, of making sure that we're reviewing buildings and, and keeping our residents safe. And so um, it's unfortunate that something happened, but I'm glad that, you know, we're aware of it and, and hopefully moving forward, we can make sure that we're um, catching anything like that or, or whatnot. Okay, Council, do you have any questions to clarify information provided by the public or the staff? <coughs> so at this time, since all citizens wishing to speak have had an opportunity to do so, and since the City Council has had the opportunity to ask questions regarding the testimony provided, it's appropriate to close the public comment portion of this hearing. Unless the council wishes to take action to keep the hearing open or to continue the hearing to a future meeting, the hearing should be considered closed. And audience, thank you so much for being here. So at this time, I would invite council to make a motion to begin discussion and deliberation. Council President. Can I have an ordinance number, please? 3336. I move that we, the City Council of the City of Linwood, Washington, adopt ordinance number 3336, an ordinance of the City of Linwood, Washington relating to regulations for the city center zoning districts, amending LMC 21.60.100, 21.60.300, and 21.60.400, adding a new LMC 21.60.350 repealing existing city center design guidelines as adopted by ordinance number 2937, adopting updated city center design guidelines, and providing for severability and effective date and summary publication. Second. Thank you, Council President. Would you like to speak to the ordinance? I would, yes. Uh, the, the process um, that we have gone through, that the staff has gone through, to make the changes that they have, uh, not only to the documents themselves, but the research that they've done, the lessons learned. Uh, all of this is to make and help the designs to be better for the city. Uh, and, and I think a lot of that consideration that has taken place has to do with future growth, with, um, you know, as was mentioned, when, when in the documents it's mentioned the lesson learned that shows this, you know, this is where we we're at, this is where we're trying to go. Um, specifically, the, I, I think it's important to note that we can't possibly um, put zoning regulations for every single uh, thing that can occur. Uh, and as Ashley mentioned, doing so I think would actually hurt more than it would help these documents and the, the building designs. So I think it is also appropriate to give some leeway to the director or to whomever uh, in, in that position can make those decisions. Because as was mentioned, when we have, you know, when you have a, a building that's, or a, a plan that says there's supposed to be six trees and there's something that's in the way that has to do with electrical or the water and putting a tree over that would at some point prohibit the water or the electricity from actually flowing into the building. The city council, I think, is not in a good, as good a position to determine that as a professional like the director of, of that department. So I think it's very appropriate to have the director be, uh, have some leeway and be able to make those decisions um, because all of those decisions don't need to come to the council for approval and I think it's very appropriate to do that. So I appreciate the work that you've done uh, and really especially holding yourselves accountable for um, things that you've seen in the past or that we may have done that could probably be done better. And so stating, here's a lesson learned and here's how we're going to improve that. So I appreciate that as well. Thank you. Councilmember Cotton. Thank you, Honor. I'll echo some of what Council President uh, said, just uh, commending staff for their hard work on this. I know that this is, uh, you know, just reading through the document, it's a very uh, lengthy and robust and detailed document. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate you also helping guide us in the understanding that 
this lays on top of all of the other current existing codes that we have for building and built environments within the zoning. So uh, I appreciate all of that. Um, I, I'm also of the like mind that I think that having some flexibility allows us to also um, react to new technologies. Uh, you know, I don't know whether we'll see any development with uh, structured timber in Linwood, but um, it's certainly exciting to hear about those kinds of developments because structured timber, if you haven't heard about it, is actually uh, a carbon negative because it entraps carbon because it's it's timber as opposed to concrete or steel, which uh, are are carbon are carbon positive. So, um, I think allowing some kind of leeway and some kind of uh, leaving that and trusting the department director to make the right call for the community is appropriate. Um, I also appreciate the comments about uh, that we're promoting LEED and those kinds of things which are um, adopted in accredited agencies that are actually provide metrics and abilities for us to say this building is more environmentally friendly than that building because um, without any kind of standard or measuring stick we really kind of don't know. Um, so I'm in support of this. I think uh, staff has done a very good job of briefing us and doing their homework. Um, I will also note that on some of the, in some of the standards here, we do talk about um, pedestrian crossings and promenades and some of the very specific um, street development stuff. So there is some language in there too that addresses making sure that there's a, appropriate pedestrian crossings marked and, um, and, and uh, what's the word? Uh, upgraded, so to speak. So, um, all that's in support of that and great work from staff. Thank you. Any other council comments? Council Vice President Brazil. I also wanted to uh, just express my appreciation for the hard work uh, that's gone into the updates here and the considerations, and also for the wonderful input that we had from our citizens that have just brought things to light. Uh, and we'll be taking them into account as we move forward. And I just appreciate the involvement by the citizens. Thank you. Other council comments? Yeah, we'll okay. Call for the vote, please. Mm -hmm. Council Member Cotton? Aye. Council Vice President Frizzell? Yes. Council President Goodwin? Affirmative. Council Member Hurst? Yes. Council Member Ross? Yes. Council Member Sessions? Yes. Council Member Sutton? Yes. Seven yes, Mayor. Thank you. Ordinance number 3336 passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to our second public hearing this evening. This is a public hearing. It's an ordinance approving a development agreement for the Linwood Place Phase Two project. So at this time, the City Council and I will conduct a public hearing to adopt an ordinance approving the Linwood Place Phase 2 Development Agreement between the City of Linwood, Edmond School District No. 15, Wakefield Alderwood LLC and Alderwood Commercial LLC and the Home Depot Corporation. The purpose of public hearings is to allow the public to express their views on matters under consideration by the City Council. Decisions will not be made until after citizens have had the opportunity to comment on this application. The matter of a development agreement is a quasi-judicial in nature, and common rules for such hearings apply. For quasi-judicial matters, the City Council will base its decision upon the evidence and testimony made part of the record during the hearing on the matter. Public hearings must be fair and free of conflicts of interest. So before we start the proceedings, and this also applies to myself, it's important that we disclose potential conflicts of interest and communications outside of this hearing. Accordingly, I ask each of us at the dais to follow um, at the dais the following questions. Does anyone have a financial or personal interest in this property or issue? Does anyone stand to gain or lose financially from the council's decision? Does anyone have any reason to believe that they cannot hear and consider this matter in a fair and objective manner? All right. 
Has anyone received information or engaged in communication outside of this hearing with proponents or opponents of the issue at hand? And no one answered these in the affirmative. Attorney Larson, so I think we're good to go. All right. Does the audience object to my participation or any council member's participation in these proceedings? And if so, that person should come forward to the lector now and state the objection. Well now, the public hearing is officially open. An official recording is being made of what is said during this hearing, so it's essential that anyone addressing the city council do so from the lectern. The written materials provided in the agenda packet will be considered part of the official record for this matter. The sequence of tonight's public hearing will be as follows. Everyone wishing to speak during this hearing will be asked to swear under oath that their testimony will be truthful. Our city staff will provide an oral report that summarizes the matter at hand. The city council may ask clarifying questions specifically related to staff's report. Members of the audience will be invited to come to the lectern to share information you wish the city council to consider. First, I will call for speakers from the sign-up sheet that was located outside the chamber's entrance. After that, I will call for speakers who did not sign up. After the public testimony portion of this hearing, I will invite city staff to offer clarifying information responsive to the public comments. The city council may ask clarifying questions of the speakers specifically related to their testimony. Citizen responses must be made from the lectern. Once everyone has had an opportunity to speak, I will ask each speaker if they wish to speak a second time for the sole purpose of rebuting or correcting the testimony or evidence provided by another speaker. After receiving testimony from interested party and the city council is ready to begin its deliberation, I will close the public hearing. Occasionally, public hearings are reopened or held to a future meeting. After the hearing's closed, the city council can begin its deliberation and ultimately determine what actions should be taken. Alternatives available to city council include approve the matter as written, approve the matter as amended or conditioned by the city council, deny the matter, continue the public hearing or council deliberation to a future meeting. As mayor, my role is to facilitate the hearing and council's deliberation, and we will use the following ground rules for this public hearing. When coming to the lectern, speakers should state their name and address. Please speak into the microphone so that others can hear you and so that your testimony can be recorded. Comments may only be made from the lectern. Only one person may speak at a time. And please be concise in your testimony. I may adjust the orders of speakers when doing so supports the purpose of this hearing. Everyone is asked to respect opinions that differ from yours and to help ensure members of the audience are not intimidated or <coughs> discouraged from expressing their views. The purpose of this hearing is to receive citizen input. It is not the time for back and forth discussion or for debate. I will now ask David Kleitsch, Economic Development Director and our Interim Community Development Director to provide an overview of the topic at hand. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. <clears throat> I'm sorry for the uh, sudden onset of a cough. At the work session on May 6th, 2019, City Council received a briefing regarding this matter. At that briefing, the draft ordinance, uh, draft development agreement, some background materials were presented uh, for the council. Council was offered the opportunity to ask questions on those matters. Tonight, the staff will, for the record, provide an overview for council of the materials and also a brief presentation of the proposed project. As the mayor mentioned, this is a quasi-judicial matter. Ultimately, city council is being asked to adopt an ordinance approving a development agreement for the southern portion of the former Linwood High School property. The property is located on 184th Street, directly north of Alderman Mall. Uh, the development is proposed as a mixed-use project with housing, commercial buildings, a Home Depot, landscaping, and parking. Uh, the proposal is in compliance with the zoning for this area, and the Home Depot has received a conditional use permit previously, which is needed for them to move forward. 
Uh, the project components have also completed the project design review process. So what you see tonight will be what's in the document that was reviewed administratively and uh, we'll move forward upon approval of the development agreement. Infrastructure improvements are the provision of a trail connection between Alderwood Mall Parkway and the Inner Urban Trail. Uh, this connection will uh, provide uh, direct access from the Alderwood, uh, uh, across Alderwood Parkway from Linwood uh, Place to the Inner Urban Trail. Uh, street improvements that may be provided if necessary are improvements at Maple Road, which is east of Alderwood Mall Parkway, a small turn lane through lane roughly in the vicinity of the AMP and Mini Mart, as well as a um, construction, thank you, David, uh, of a um, traffic signal and full intersection improvements at 184th Street. Uh, what is asked of council in the development agreement is that if acquisition of right-of-way is needed for those two components, uh, that that be the um, responsibility of the city. The city has looked at that situation, uh, sees that as a, uh, um, a matter that can easily be accommodated, but further analysis re is reviewed pending design of those two improvement projects. Uh, the two components of the project, the mixed use and the uh, Home Depot, are also responsible for the payment of city impact fees and service charges pursuant to the LMC. I'd also like to draw your attention to the council packet regarding the questions from the work session. So the work session questions have been outlined, summarized and outlined for the council. And um, I want to mention specifically question four. Uh, question four has been clarified uh, that the work session, it was stated that the um, reduction uh, for parking was 63 spaces, which was seven, 15 per, sorry, 7% 7 of the total. So I'll repeat that. A reduction of 63 spaces, which was 7% of the total for the mixed use project. Uh, we um, uh, were coming off a earlier version of that calculus. Uh, it is a reduction of 146 spaces or 15% of the total primarily in anticipation or providing flexibility to the developer for the provision of a restaurant, uh, if one Director uh, Kleitsch, could you please tell us what page you're on? I'm where sorry. these questions are I'm being answered? I'm on page B67. B6. I'm on line uh, 21 of page B67. B67. And it is uh, the last exhibit in your packet all the way at the end. So it's after exhibit F of the development. 90.2 B-67, it's the last attachment in your packet. We're getting caught up with you. All right, okay, thank you. My apologies. Uh, so there I would like to point out line 26, that paragraph clarifies the reduction. I would also like to point out that the Home Depot did not request a parking reduction. Uh, and finally, I would also like to uh, draw Council's attention to page B68, uh, question seven. Uh, that would be on line six of page B68. That just outlines the parking that will be provided by the project both for the Home Depot and also for the mixed use component of the project. So with that, I um, summarized and went through the pages of the document at the um, work session, um, received questions from council on that document. So I'll let that document stand in the record as the development agreement and will answer any specific questions council may have pursuant to the quasi-judicial nature of the proceeding. Uh, and I will turn it over to Todd Hall, who will go over the design elements of the project. All right, thank you, David. Uh, good evening, council mayor. Um, this is just a brief 
orientation again for the overall project, which includes both Home Depot and the mixed use component. So I'll keep this brief. Uh, we do have the applicants here tonight that will be presenting um, their own presentations, but I will just go over this and uh, brief for the benefit of the public. So again, Linwood Place, just to orient everybody, this is the uh, former Linwood uh, High School campus site. Uh, so just to the north of Alderwood Mall and um, to the west of uh, the Target area and to the east of the uh, H Mart. Uh, this area is approximately 40 acres total. And in 2013, 2012-2013, uh, there were several actions that took place uh, for the initiation of the overall Linwood Place um, process. This was an interlocal agreement with the Edmonds School District, uh, a comprehensive plan map and text changes, zoning map and text changes, and then Ordinance 3030, which was the development agreement for the Phase 1, which was the Costco development, and then Ordinance 3051, which is the first development agreement um, for Phase 2. And um, as David pointed out uh, earlier, this will be superseded by uh, tonight's uh, development agreement. So here's just a overview of the entire uh, phase two site. So on the east side of the site is the Home Depot that will include uh, some surface parking out on the front and also some rooftop parking. And then the Linwood phase two mixed use uh, buildings uh, that's built on top of a podium and then we'll have some structured parking underneath um, the building there. So these are just a couple of snapshots of the Home Depot. The applicant will have s uh, some additional um, uh, photos uh, during their presentation. Uh, it's about <coughs> 137, 347,000 square feet with rooftop parking and a total of 441 spaces. Uh, the, as David mentioned, the design review has been completed. Upon execution of the development agreement, those will be, uh, uh, the project design review will be signed by the, the community development director, and that would be David Kleitch. And then uh, conditional use permit specifically was approved for this particular part of the project, uh, was to allow for the home improvement center and the commercial residential zone. The CR zone is the only zone within the entire city and as part of the approval process for the Home Depot for a home improvement center, a CUP was required and that went through our hearing examiner. Uh, this is just an aerial view of uh, kind of showing uh, how this uh, site layout will work. So you'll see the uh, 184th on the far right side. Um, and then the, this new bisecting road uh, that will go from uh, north to south um, through the site, separating both Home Depot and Linwood Phase 2. Um, there's an opportunity for a future uh, retail or restaurant out in front of Home Depot there, which is that represented by the white box on the left side. And then you have the surface parking and the rooftop parking above on uh, Home Depot. So moving on to the Linwood... Uh, Place phase two mixed use building. This is uh, going to be a four story, uh, or so, sorry, four five story multifamily uh, residential buildings over a single podium of parking and ground floor retail and surface parking. Uh, there will be a total of 500 units, uh, approximately 10,000 square feet of office space, 12,000 square feet of retail, and a total of 876 parking spaces. And like the Home Depot project, this pre-DR has been completed by staff and will be executed upon the uh, approval of the, of the DA. And then uh, administrative parking reduction was actually completed for this one, as David mentioned earlier, in terms of the question um, that we um, just answered, question four in the uh, exhibit. Um, there was a reduction of 15% uh, for that uh, particular uh, project. So this is the site plan for that mixed use building. So again, on the right side actually is just showing part of that Home Depot parking area. And then on the left side is uh, this project. So you'll have some retail um, office space on the far east side of the building fronting the bisecting road. And then you have the structured uh, par parking underneath the building and the, under the podium. And then one of the questions uh, was, uh, was there uh, landscaping provided and reviewed? Um, 
this is just one sheet of many. I didn't want to include every sheet, <laughs> but this just gives you a representation of what was submitted um, to the staff for their review. So it shows extensive uh, landscaping on all sides of the building. There's many more that shows greater detail on the courtyards or the inner courtyards of the building on the exterior of the building, but just wanted to show the representation of, of the landscaping plans that were submitted for staff review. Um, these are the elevations that are submitted. So on the top there is the north side. This is the side facing Costco on the inner road would be, uh, I believe, 182nd, <coughs> excuse me. And then the east side uh, is on the bottom there. That's the side facing towards Home Depot. So you'll see on the bottom there some of that retail and office space um, that would face that inner uh, bisecting road. On the, then on the next page here, the, the top uh, elevation is showing the south. This is the one that's facing 184th. And then the west side, this is the side facing the new ring road that was developed as part of the Linwood Place uh, Phase 1 or the Costco project. And then that, that just bottom uh, corner there is just showing some of the examples of that uh, west elevation, uh, which is the one right above there or tucked in the middle there of where that Linwood Place signage would be on that wall. So this is one of the perspectives. Uh, this is the 182nd and 33rd Avenue. This would be the northwest side. So this is uh, your, your 33rd or, or a loop road is the one on the right and that Costco uh, road. This, is, this one is uh, signalized currently going into and out of Costco. So as you're looking at this site, this is where the um, pond, ponds or the open space currently looks as if you're looking towards the mall. And then this is the uh, 184th and 33rd Avenue side. Um, this one is facing uh, to the northeast. So 184th is the street that's on the, the bottom there. And then the signalized 33rd loop, which would be uh, kind of rounding around that corner to the left. Uh, so just to go over the approval process again, it is a quasi-judicial hearing tonight and the adoption of the development agreement uh, ordinance will repeal that original ordinance that was approved as part of the original phase two development um, uh, from a few years back. So that concludes staff's presentation at this time. Thank you very much. So does any member of city council have a question to clarify information provided during the staff presentation or in the written materials in your packet? Council member Sessions. Thank you. And thank you for uh, the format of the questions uh, and the answers of the questions. That's helpful. Although I don't really like the answers. Um, so one of the my questions was about the t rooftop of the parking. So it's just simply that it's not designed to function as a local area for community events. Does that mean that we can't ever use that, that that's not a spot? Can you clarify that? Or is that just like some official response? Well, I would uh, actually leave that up to the Home Depot Corporation. I will say from a building code public safety access, uh, it is very restrictive and limited. And then um, I would also say that if you put people up there, you're creating a concentrated, um, I don't want to say dead load, but a concentrated load on the roof. So that's where you get into the engineering of cars versus people versus massing versus other activities. Uh, so between the limited access um, and the building code issues, which I'm sure Home Depot can talk to uh, later, it's not really seen as feasible for those types of events, and that's why you have the answer you have. Are we going to be able to hear from the developers tonight? Is that part of? That's part of the process. Oh, good. Um, okay. Well, you know, just trying to think. I mean, I don't really love the roof idea, but it's something creative um, because I don't see anything else creative about this property and and I'm sad about that because 
I was hoping that we could do something more creative with it, a reason to cross the street from the mall. And I was hoping that there would be some other ideas, and maybe there will be. Maybe you're still going to talk to me here, but um, but it says, where in the project are the amusement, recreation uses, and retail shops located? There's not. It's not included in the scope, other than the separate retail and restaurants. Um, I, that's just disappointing. It's such a it's, that property could be so robust and vibrant. And it's across from a fun area that's only going to be more exciting. And I'm sad that it's not going to be cooler. Um, then the last question, 15, what are the future plans to reduce congestion on 33rd? So it, it says here, and I don't remember this at all, but I probably just missed it, um, that 33rd, will be widened to five lanes. And then the connection at 33rd and 179th, is that that's going to be the new signal in the future? Are they going to take away that other one that's the, the complicated the complicated one? or? Uh, yeah, David Bach, Public Works Department. Thank you. Um, so when the city worked with the school district originally for phase one, uh, we did work to have a dedication to at some point in the future that if the city needs to widen the ring road, what we call the ring road, which is the 33rd road that runs around the perimeter of the site, it's currently three lanes wide, that it can be widened to five lanes at some point in the future, okay. essentially widens toward the west and toward the north. Um, so there is a, um, actually the big retaining wall that's along the side of the, the road there is actually designed in a way that, that the road could be widened if that's needed at some point. And then regarding your question, um, and I'm just trying to get caught up to you, uh, on the north end, is that specifically where you're talking about where the two traffic signals are north of Costco on the ring road? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so. I believe that's 30th place that comes down the hill uh, in close proximity to Alderman Mall Parkway. Mm -hmm. They're only about 100, 200 feet apart mm -hmm. from each other. Um, that uh, we do at some point hope to work with, uh, there's a large undeveloped or there's a single family property um, yeah. adjacent to there that when mm -hmm. that or if that property redevelops, mm -hmm. the city would like to eliminate that 30th place connection mm -hmm. and that signal and then basically construct a new signal further to the west that would line up with the driveway that enters Costco. So if you're coming in from the oh. north along the oh. 33rd Ring Road, it's the oh. first left you take into the Costco. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Ross? Just curious. Um, I don't know if it's covered in here or if it's covered in the CUP that they had to get, but are there restrictions on taking up parking spaces for things like building materials and lawn mulch around the Home Depot? Uh, I believe that activity occurs in the, um, in the garden area. And there is an area in the back that is uh, loading and uh, unloading. Uh, so there are other areas besides from the front where that would happen. Uh, I'm, but I would defer to Home Depot in their discussion on where that would specifically be located. Councilmember Hurst. Oh, thank you. Um, back to the section on council questions. One, one of my questions was not listed, and that was when I asked uh, whether this property was going to have any affordable housing on it or if it's market rate. And I believe um, Mr. Hall could give us that answer. Is our understanding from the developer that there's no affordable housing going to be provided on the site? Okay. And then I had a question on Exhibit D, the the lead uh, worksheet, where we get the score. And, I, and Home Depot uh, looks like it, they get it, they're certified. So is there any tax incentive for a certified lead uh, building in the city? Uh, the city 
Uh, no, there are not. Um, uh, the only place that that happens, as was mentioned by Mr. Algram, was where people locate in housing in the city center, so there isn't a break in this location. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Council? Are there any new written materials or correspondence that has not yet been distributed? Uh, Mayor and Council, yes. that would be no. No, thank you. We have not received any. Thank you. So now I'll invite members of the audience to come forward and speak, and I want to start with the project applicant, the proponent. So if you would like to come forward, you can either speak from the lectern or join the table panel. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so my name is Steve Molsom. I'm with uh, Wakefield Properties LLC, which is actually the developer of this property. Um, we're also dividing into two entities. Uh, it'll be um, Alderwood Commercial uh, LLC and Wakefield Alderwood LLC. It's the same ownership as my partner and I, uh, Len Evans. So, but for um, breaking the property into two uh, different uh, lots, we have two different entities. Um, our address is 1457 130th Avenue Northeast in Bellevue, 98005. Um, I guess I'm just going to try to summarize 14 months of hard work into five minutes, so <laughs> I'm probably going to leave a couple details out. Um, we were approached um, um, almost 14 months ago by um, the uh, Edmonds School District. Uh, my partner and I have been fortunate. Uh, we developed the Mill Creek Town Center project. We've developed Snohomish Station. We've developed... We're just finishing up up in Mar Marysville, uh, the marketplace at Smoky Point, and uh, the lodge, which is a 200,000 square foot commercial center and 542 apartments, which has um, been a good lead into what we're doing here as far as the number of units and all that. Uh, we also have recently finished uh, Covington Crossing um, down um, uh, on Highway 18 in Covington. So um, just to kind of bring a lot of um, hard work research and stuff to kind of answer some of the questions. I, I was very aware of, um, of this development when Cypress was involved. Um, we num number of us developers heard about it. Um, we knew Costco was involved, but we also knew that they were, you know, they were doing some, something similar we were doing at Mill Creek Town Center at the time. And um, what Mill Creek Town Center was for us was the opportunity to the Central Market and University Bookstore we developed on both sides of the street. It was in a time and place when um, we had a lot of activity with uh, small shops, uh, you know, you remember blockbusters of the world and all that. And uh, so when we started with this development, when we first got involved in it, my idea was, well, we had to, you know, it was made pretty clear that the apartments were important to the city. So we're, we've developed a number of apartments. We did the Hawthorne and Mill Creek. We did the Kennedy Building at the U District. So we were very familiar with, we were a good uh, developer for this property to do mixed use. As we laid out the apartments, um, it became clear that you know we were going to be left with about half the property for commercial. And as we went to ICSC, as we scoured the market and tried to figure out you know what our tenant mix would be, you know we were looking for small shops, you know, coffee shops, small restaurants, and all that. Well, you know this company called Amazon came along, and uh, it, it kind of obliterated a lot of the tenants that we were that we were talking to, and uh, we had tenants in our own centers that were especially small shop tenants were having a really hard time with this so it really became down to really the survival of the fittest in the retail market and when you do the structure that the um, that the school district wants which I think is a very fortuitous and wise move which is to do it on a 99 year ground lease versus selling the property well you got to think about a developer like us, we got to sleep at night, and and you got to uh, who are you going to put there that you know is going to be around? Is it going to be Toys R Us? Well, probably not. Does that mean it goes? The list goes on. So, what we were approached with was the opportunity to get uh, with Home Depot there, and I kind of reacted like you did, uh, Councilmember Sessions. Is this wasn't our original idea, but as you look at the marketplace and you look at the opportunity, 
I think Home Depot maybe is doing five stores this year across the country. Um, they used to do many more stores. We did one up at Sonoma Station with them, and, and they're a very, very fine uh, corporation. So it just it, it came to the point where it really was what, from a financial standpoint, with the city, us as developers, the school district, what was going to be the, the long-term uh, ability for the tenants to be there 20 years from now or 30 years from now. And so um, as we started designing, and they, um, they've done something they've done very, they've, it's been very rare across the country is to put rooftop parking on it. So they understood where they were at. They understood the setting that we had. They designed this building because my tenants have to, <laughs> my apartment tenants have to look out over it. So I'm, as, I'm concerned about that also. I couldn't say enough about working with Home Depot and their, their willingness to do whatever it took to be able to be in the Linwood community. And um, I think that having them is, uh, we should be very thankful. I know that I am to, ha to be able to have them there as a financial stability, plus what I think they're gonna bring to the Linwood community. So um, that's a little bit on how the, the evolution of this project got to where it was. And as far as the apartments, um, we've developed in, in a lot of areas. We've developed in Redmond, we've developed in the U District, and I scoured you know, West Seattle and Green Lake and Redmond and uh, up by Microsoft where a lot of activity is going on. This project will compare to anything uh, in any of those markets uh, because this 405 corridor now is, is kind of connected. You know, it gets, there's no real difference now between going down to Bothell or going to Woodenville, getting into Kirkland and all that. So. Um, I will, you know, I know that we'll have the best project in the north end. The materials here, we've worked very closely with Todd and Ashley. Those development standards, I mean, they're no big deal to us because we're already doing it. I mean, we're bringing that kind of um, attention to detail. And so it's hard to always see that in an elevation. One of the things about these elevations, you look at them and you say, well, what's the big gray thing in the bottom? Well, that's a two-story parking garage you'll, you'll never see. We're able to take the residential right from the street up, which will be a much better look in the locations that are at than having to look at empty commercial space where it isn't practical. Where we really focused is on that access drive. We have, we've left spaces there for, to activate that street for the restaurants. If you look at the landscape plan in that handout, we've done an amphitheater down there. We've done a raised, um, you know, kind of a performance area down there. Our idea is to, like uh, uh, Council Member Sessions had said, is we want to activate, we want people to have a place to go. but we're really surrounded by parking lots out there. So what we're gonna be bringing with the landscaping and the, the type of tenants, I mean, there's, te there's tenants like uh, Flat Stick, you know, which for the young people, they love going there. It's got the indoor, you know, putting uh, miniature golf in there and, and shuffle boards and all that stuff. They're interested in going in this space. So we're really kind of trying to be a little bit of the entertainment center. But the fact of the matter is the one big entertainment group that says a D and a B in it, <laughs> wanted one building and, and 400 parking stalls, uh, surface, no underground parking, no nothing. I mean, that was what the alternatives were to what we were able to provide here. So it's a little bit, you have to look at what the market is doing right now. And I think this, as a developer of this property, we are, this is, you, you'll be proud of it when it's all done. It's the same thing when I was at Snowman Station, you know, people were worried about it. Now people love it up there, Mill Creek Town Center, we got a lot of flack on that, and now people love that. So I think if, uh, if you give us the opportunity to build this, I think you'll be very proud, and you'll be uh, extremely proud of the quality. So I've just handed this out just more for clarification. Most of the stuff's already in your packet, but I think the elevation, especially uh, with the amount of windows and glass and, and getting rid of the parking would, uh, would be more helpful. So that's uh, all I have. All right. Uh, Yes, is there's, yeah, we'll do questions um, okay. in a bit here. Is Long there someone? To turn it over to Scott Mommer from uh, yes, Home Depot. Yes, I do, for Home Depot, thank you. I haven't got used to sitting down on their presentation yet. Uh, I have it. Okay, good. <laughs> I was sneaky, wasn't I? Yes, you were. And I do thank you, Beth, for getting this PowerPoint up there. Uh, my name is Scott Momer. I'm a site development coordinator for Home Depot. I've been doing it for about 25 years now um, with a consulting firm uh, who does it for Home Depot. Tonight with me, I have Kim Cohen from Home Depot. She's the senior real estate manager uh, out of Atlanta who's overseeing this project. I think, as Steve indicated, over the last 14 months, uh, 
a lot of hard work and hard effort got into this project to get it where it is tonight to be before you and I thank staff for all their work and support to get us here tonight. Um, and with that, I have a small presentation to give regarding the project. And I click. It was a pretty interesting night to hear all the events and everything going on and um, really enjoyed hearing hearing all that and 60 years. Wow, that's pretty good. You take my whole uh, presentation away. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just running through what uh, was previously mentioned about the project. The, the Home Depot, um, obviously don't need to get into the map of where it's at because I guess when you say Costco, the mall, everybody knows uh, where it's at, the previous uh, school site. Um, with this project as indicated, the parking for it, there was no variance. Uh, the parking that you see proposed for it is actually um, also required upon us to meet a parking demand by Costco. Uh, they have a, uh, what we call a, a REA over the whole entire property that dictates certain things that we can and cannot do on the property and one is parking. Um, so the parking is an aggregate of 415 stalls with approximately 207 on the bottom and 200 and 208 on the, the roof for the total of 415 stalls. Um, with the design of this project, um, the road going through it was designed uh, with the guidelines of the city to be uh, pedestrian friendly. Uh, we have unique uh, lighting for the street lights going through there so they don't match the shopping center light. They, they're special for the street along with the bollard pedestrian lighting to make it pedestrian friendly as you go through the street. And then as it curves down, it lines up with the Costco driveway uh, to create that continuity between the uh, two projects. Um, the uh, signage for the uh, project, actually, let me do this. I have. <laughs> Very smart. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Maybe we need to try a different flash drive. So on the handout was the similar uh, rendering that you saw uh, earlier. It's just been freshed up um, to be the, uh, the current site layout with the uh, parking lot. As indicated by staff, the uh, building out front, that's uh, within, per se, the Home Depot parking lot, but it's Wakefield's uh, development, so it's not Home Depot's um, out lot. So Wakefield will be controlling how that will ultimately be developed. Uh, I think we've been through the site plan. 
Uh, the renderings are just fresh on this one as opposed to the one that you saw previously to indicate the uh, new site layout. Um, we, as Home Depot, attempted to do a view of the access road. Um, so uh, we acquired Steve's elevation and then showed the road going through there. And you can see the unique uh, old-fashioned street lights like uh, just past that little white car here so those will be throughout that area there so this kind of gives you a, a snapshot and you can see Costco in the background there uh, so it was an attempt at our rendering of the street um, showing the apartments then we have the various elevations of the Home Depot uh, along with signage one thing with signage um, that's part of the DA is rather than have a monument sign for uh, Wakefield, one for Home Depot, uh, we have a joint one. So we have the Home Depot, and then these panels over here are for Wakefield um, to put in as they see fit for their retail restaurants and so forth. So that's combining uh, rather than have separate signs on each side of the street. Um, so we think that's a big plus for the project. The, uh, the Home Depot, I think there was questions asked about the, uh, um, you know, what Home Depot does or what Home Depot provides. Um, Home Depot, you know, gives back. It gives back to the community. It gives back uh, overall um, to uh, um, veterans and uh, ve various other agencies. Uh, this store would probably employ about 150 to 200 um, employees. Uh, one thing about Home Depot, um, a lot of people start uh, at Home Depot picking up the carts in the parking lot, going to school, and end up going through the whole program, end up being manager, re regional managers. It's, it's phenomenal. In the 25 years that I've been doing this, how I'll come across a, uh, a regional manager or a senior VP, and they started off pushing the carts uh, into the store. So. Uh, that's one thing about Home Depot and how you can grow with Home Depot uh, as an employee. Um, with Home Depot, you know, this site was selected um, based on the demographics, um, but also where we are located on various other cities surrounding uh, Linwood, and we're like, bing, this is equal to all the other to get those sales here versus going off to the other uh, to the other stores, um, Home Depot does have online sales. I know some communities are concerned about that. You know, where does that tax base go? Uh, well, typically, about 6.7 percent of on-site mm -hmm. uh, online sales are actually picked up at the store um, versus being delivered. Uh, to a customer. So this, this site, I think, as I previously mentioned, uh, it, it was designed with the pedestrian friendly um, to go through it as you dive into the site plan. Uh, we actually have spots on both sides of the road uh, for benches, for people to sit down as they stroll through this area. So it is set up to be pedestrian um, friendly um, between the two projects. Obviously, uh, one of the questions came up, stormwater management, um, won't dive into that, but uh, we definitely have the stormwater management. Um, Home Depot uh, is committed as they are in every community. Um, and the way it typically uh, works or 
does work for Home Depot is that we have our veterans and disaster and training and so forth, um, but also each store, the manager um, is the person who controls what um, he does in the community. So uh, he's giving given a certain amount of his sales for giving back to the community. So he's the one who ends up um, participating with the community. And you have to remember, because uh, I just had this happen on another project, you know, uh, why can't we get this or why another one, why can't we get that? So the way it works is uh, you actually apply for something from Home Depot um, and then it's processed by the store and then they give back and then it's rotated. It always just can't be one certain um, entity or, or whatever. It's, it's rotated and each store manager um, works with the community to, to give back. I think related to uh, um, the uh, green and so forth, a uh, question came up about this project for, uh, for LEED. Um, so we're, we're gonna demonstrate uh, that we're gonna be a LEED certified. So what we represented in the DA was a checklist that utilized for LEED certified. Uh, so we had our architects and um, special lead person go through and uh, evaluate the store. Uh, so I believe we came up with like 40 points and we need 36. I don't remember the exact number offhand. But one thing I'd like to say about Home Depot, back in the uh, 2008, 2009, um, not Home Depot along with two other big box participated with the federal government on experimenting with new stores, energy consumption and products. Um, so what you see out there today um, in offices and, and businesses was all part of this federal um, investigation of what, what can be used, what works, what doesn't work. Um, so, you know, applaud the Home Depot for being part of that. It's not something that's advertised or told um, day in, day out, but that's how we got where we are. Um, so, maybe the elephant in the room. The roof. <laughs> um, so, Home Depot is a business, um, and to be able to utilize the roof, it would, uh, it, it, it's a whole different uh, liability. It's a whole different um, uh, in, insurance associates, man hours and so forth to be able to utilize the roof for, for something that Home Depot just can't come out and say, yes, we're gonna do this on the roof. Um, I think S Steve mentioned he's going to have a uh, amphitheater part of his project to be able to have movies and, and so forth there. Um, so, you know, there is that component there. But just to put, put out there that Home, Home Depot has its own liability um, by doing that. And then do you start putting up, you know, eight foot fences on the roof, you know, so, you know, Somebody doesn't jump off, and you know, it just goes on and on. Um, so it's a really difficult thing to uh, commit to, and I just wanted to get that get that out there. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. So let me. I think that we have one more partner speaker with the school district, or no? Is it? Yes, we do. We have the property owner, probably yeah, the so most important speaker tonight. I know, so I think we should hear from Lydia Selly at this point, and then we can move into some questions. We'll get all our presentations. So I also signed up for public comment, so I'm imagining this will replace 
so I won't okay. have to speak twice. Oh, there you go. Um, I'm Lydia Sully. I'm the Executive Director of Business and Finance at the Edmonds School District. Um, I'm relatively new to this position, so I have been learning about this project, got very excited. So I am speaking on behalf of the Edmonds School District in support of the pro project. I'm asking you to uh, please approve the agreement this evening and uh, congratulate you on your 60th anniversary. Um, Edmonds acquired this property 59 years ago. So we are right behind you. Um, it fits in with our vision of what we see as a good community partnership with all players and beneficial to the community as whole. I have put my thoughts down in writing, which I will um, provide copies to all of you. And if you have any questions of me, I will be available. Otherwise, I will just hand out the copies that I have crafted. Okay. Well, okay. we'll take your copies. <laughs> Thank you for so your time. So I think time. I have to continue with public comments. So I want to ask at this point, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak this evening? Okay, let me get, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Rosa Antoine, why don't you start? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, Rosa, do you want to start? I'm sorry. A little hard of hearing. It's all right. Me too. Rosa Antoine, um, 19501 40th Avenue West. Um, I've been looking at that big open space there near Costco since I moved up here, wondering what are they going to put there? And I'm excited to hear that there's going to be more housing, but I wasn't very happy with the response to um, George Hurst's question about low-income housing. In this day and age, it should be mandated by any city, I think, <laughs> that anybody that builds anything should have a s part of them, at least, to be for low-income housing. Um, people are hurting all over. The prices of everything goes up all the time. And most people don't keep up with their wages, the average person, you know. And when you live on a limited income, of course, as a senior, uh, it does limit what you can do. So um, I would ask that there be some consideration going into this, that there be some of these places be dedicated for low income. Thank you. Maria Ambacombi. Your name is not Maria. She called Maria, darling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret. Margaret Annie. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> nice try, Annie. Nice try. <laughs> Maria Abercrombie, 19501, 40th Avenue West. Um, I, in just in listening to all of this, maybe I'm misinterpreting, but I've heard the term family, you know, fam multi-family, multi-family unit. And when I think of family, I think of a mother, father, some children. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe that's just a, a construction term that's used to mean a box where somebody lives in. I'm 66 years old, I live by myself, is where I live. Is that considered a family unit? Um, so it concerns me when the word family is brought into this, <clears throat> makes it sound like, oh, we're gonna have families, and yet I don't see a playground for children. I don't see where this, in, within this construction, there's some culture um, or provision for cultural development uh, for our children, for the future. Our children are our future. What are we providing in this space for them? Um, and it, it has so many possibilities. Um, Home Depot 
gee, I mean, that's so limitless. Um, you could work with the school district, put it it's right there. You have all the lumber, all the tools, make a workshop, work with the buildings, have the children, have the kids from the high school bust over. That be their vocational training for skills. And those are real skills that they could use in real jobs to help build this community. I, I'm not so sure how many carts you would have to push to make it up to CEO of Home Depot. Um, so, you know, as a council, I ask you, what is your real vision? Are you going to have families come in here? What are you doing to attract those families? Um, the fact that um, um, the, you know, the low-income housing will not be there for them. We all know the demographics of that, you know, other areas. Who are you really calling here if you're not going to have that low income provided 20% or 30%, whatever would be required, or whatever the city could require of that development? That eliminates a lot of people, and that will determine the demographics of that area. We all know the outcome of that. A lot of cities have gone that route. So as a city council, I ask you, what is, does this, is this consistent with your vision? Maybe it is. Maybe we just don't really know what your vision is. Thank you. Thank you. And Ted Heichel. Mr. Heichel. Ted Heichel, 3820, 191st Place, Southwest Linwood. The Community Development Director may approve. The Community Development Director may grant deviations. The Director may deviate from this standard. I guess that's the answer to question number four. The project is eligible for an, an administrative parking reduction. We don't need that many parking spaces. We didn't at the shag, 0.9 for every senior apartment that's going into that. Oh, but it didn't work out. How is a 15% reduction in the number of car spaces that you have at a big apartment project? And I'm not sure, is it 500 units or is it 545? I saw the number 545 on the information that's up on the website your website, 500, you're going to have 800, 76 spaces, which is down to like 1.7. And this obviously is not for families. It's called multifamily because it's a term we use for anything that's an apartment complex. You're going to have single people coming in, married couples, both of them working in different directions, needing two parking spaces per, and you're going to be short of parking spaces again. So I, I appreciate the lady who said, what's your vision? Is this it? Already on 184th, trying to get into Costco, the turn lane that is there is already overloaded much of the time. The parking lot is almost full a lot of the time we go there and we park out in the boonies. You're going to have another entrance into this project coming off of the ring road that's going to further back up the traffic on 184th. You do have an alternate but that also is the alternate to go into Home Depot. And it states in here that there was no previous value to the property. So it's at zero. Well, when I was here a few years back, we had a terrific 
athletic complex there that the whole community could use. We lost that because the school district wanted to make money off of it and these companies who want to come in, and I don't have any problem with them coming in, but they want to make money off of this property too. We lost something big. And I hope I don't go over three minutes, but I noticed other people were given carte blanche as to how long they talked. 75%, I love Home Depot. I shop there. I go down to Aurora Village to do it. And it would be nice to have one here. But 95% of the people, I would bet, who work at Home Depot never become regional managers. Maybe that's too low a figure. Maybe it's more like 99. But there is obviously in any organization moving up. But the question too is, what are the wages? When those kids from high school come around, are they going to make $15 an hour? Are they going to make state minimum wage? So there are a lot of things that happen when you put in a big development like this. Parking, more low cost, wage, low wage jobs. And if I read this correctly, and I'm not sure I do, it looks to me like there is no real open space, no grass, no, there are a bunch of trees that are built around the edges of all the buildings in the apartment area. And there's some kind of a big, I take it it's like a paved area or brick courtyard type thing. But that is not where children are gonna play. I don't think you're gonna have many children in this. And the other, the other thing that was on the confusing to me on the information that was put up on the screen is, are these single bedroom, bedroom apartments? Are they two bedroom apartments? Are there some three bedroom apartments? You've got to judge things like parking based on that. And the other thing you have to judge is with a thousand new people moving into these apartments, how many new police officers are you going to have? When you get a thousand people in, the standard that I grew up with, that I believe is still in effect, you have to have two new police officers for every thousand people you add to your community. We have not done that in the last how many years? Since 2008. We need to get better at some of these figures and some of the things that the people in the audience are bringing up to you as to what is your vision? What is your vision? Because it's going to be here for 30, 40, maybe 50 years. Annie Lyman. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks. Uh, so 19501 40th Avenue. And uh, I moved here because I knew Linwood was well-developed. Parks, wonderful parks. Uh, just access to so many things, great arts council, really creative. I think you guys have had a vision. This is not a vision, I have to say. Uh, and I, one little example, look at Everett. Everett was a cool town, and then there was the Casino Road. They had to bring all those people that wanted to work at the aerospace and all that, and they provided all that fast housing with little other development around. And it They've had nothing but a mess. Everett has nothing but a mess with that casino area because they didn't think about planning provisions. It's like all these rats living in a maze. No place for them to go, no place to play. Crime is huge. So please don't do this. Thank you. Are there others who'd like to speak? Van Abishan. Van Abishan, 98036. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Um, there is one uh, council member left that was on the same council that I was on um, back at when the original uh, Linwood Place was codified in the city. Um, and I'm glad to see this, that this one is, is has some of the features that we talked about then. Uh, 
but I too am, am really concerned about the fact that there seems to be a lot less green space. The, um, the golf course, the miniature golf course, that's, that's some sort of an indoor thing because it says there's a metal structure above it. Uh, if that's enclosed, then that's not really green space. And also, that looks to be on the area where the retention pond used to be. So I assume then that the, re the retention, retention pond is going to be covered over, filled in, used. I don't see it on here. Maybe I'm missing something. But we got beat up really bad in, um, in 2012 over the, that, uh, that feature on the, on the site because of the, uh, the stormwater requirements. So I'm concerned about that. I also share Mr. Mr. Heichel's concern, and this will be the second time that I've asked, uh, posed this to this council, and that is, what are we going to do about the about the police pr protection for this uh, these additional 500 housing units? A thousand people, hopefully, um, will will occupy those, but they, they're still going to require uh, police protection and police services. So again, I'm asking the council, where is your, where's your plan? Where's the plan for the additional police? Where's the plan for, where, where, where are the additional police that we, in general, that we need? As Mr. Heichel pointed out, we are, we're almost, we're going on over 10 years of not really growing the police department. And we've got issues, major issues, according to some studies, with a crime in this city. So uh, again, I ask you, where's your plan for that? And with that, I'll thank you. And uh, I am glad to see that uh, some of the features were, were saved over. I'm, uh, I have to give, to give a tip of the hat to the, uh, the new folks that have come along. Um, but uh, this, we really do need to do something about some green space. Thanks. Would anyone else like to speak this evening? All right, so I think that probably Steve, Scott, and Lydia should come to the table so that you're prepared to answer questions instead of jumping up and down, unless you have an alternate who you want to represent you. And then just make sure that when you're answering a question that your microphone is on that little red light. All right. So at this point, city staff and Stephen, Scott, and Lydia, would you like to offer any clarifying information in response to the citizen testimony provided this evening? Director Kleitsch, do you want to kick that off or not? I will wait to hear questions from council. Did I miss a, a thing? Okay, so we had members of the audience to speak. Members of the audience. And then it is city staff to clarify the response to the citizen testimony and then council gets to ask questions. I have no clarification. Okay. Well, questions or statements. Any other clarifications or public statements? Um, I'd like to clarify on the, the question about the storm water. Okay. Um, so there is a currently a temporary pond. It's located um, on the north end of the site as you, you drive down that Costco, that private drive. So what that is, is that's handling water from uh, 33rd 184th and uh, not a lot of drain comes off the, the current site as it sits uh, vacant but um, we're going to be incorporating that stormwater detention uh, in a vault underneath our parking garage it'll sit at the base of that slab and uh, so we're, we're at the same design guideline the same amount of um, stormwater requirements that are currently in place now will just be changed into a into a vault that's designed for that and then the access drive um, and will be handled by a, um, an open pond similar to what's on there right now that's in the corner of the, um, on the kind of the north 
I guess it would be the, the northeast corner of that access drive as it comes down Costco. So that's how the stormwater. And then as far as green space, that we're, we're also building a sustainable project and it's in the development agreement. You'll see there's two different type of sustainability um, requirements that we have. And um, a lot of our, we're building, a, you gotta, we're building on a concrete slab. So we're starting with up two levels of parking because we basically the parking will be screened in those garages. And from there, then we're building up uh, with planted gardens and taking the stormwater off the roofs and incorporating them into into the um, um, you know all all that open space. But there is a considerable amount of open space that we have there. And what we're trying to do is we're also trying to build recreational activities. So that becomes kind of people's backyard. And there are a lot of units there to create a backyard. So we have you know open um, we have covered picnic areas. We have fire pit areas. We have a dog park that we're designing. Um, we have about a 10,000 square foot recreational facility that will be for our tenants only, and also you know include uh, you know a social area that will spill out into the the open space uh, area in the middle there. So um, there's about that's about as efficient as we can provide you know 500 units in that space and still meet all the open space requirements. And that's why I paid, paid special attention to provide that in the packet on the landscape plan. It's hard to read, but the city has a full blown copy. I'd be happy to get anybody a copy of the full plan to, to read the details on that. But a lot of time and effort and study has gone into that. Um, we just, you know, it's very important for us to provide a home for the, uh, for the residents there. Thank you. Any other responses to public testimony? No? Okay. So at this point, council, uh, it is your turn to have to um, ask questions to clarify information provided by public or the staff. Councilmember Sessions. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here and talking to us finally. It, I've been asking about this for some time and I know going back and forth without you face to face isn't as efficient. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, first, I just want to say with my comments, it's all due respect. It, Home Depot is, you know, an honorable uh, business. I love that they help veterans and do things in the community. Um, Steve, your development sounds beautiful, the apartments do, and the way you're trying to take advantage of the space you have and the quality, um, it's just not my vision. I mean, thank you for using that thing. And that's the problem, I guess. But I think you're selling yourself short, Steve, because did you say, and I heard this was a possibility before, but it wasn't mentioned, but in your corner of the property, is it the north, n no, south? The well, southeast corner of the yeah, building there? Yeah, that's a restaurant with an amphitheater? Yeah, we're, what we're trying to build there is, uh, and we haven't designed that building because we, we've got a stack of interesting restaurants and we're trying to pick the right one. Uh, I think we may end up having two there, but we designed that open space amphitheater to have the kind of the outdoor seating area to spill out into that. So on a Friday night, people can be sitting outside. We can maybe have local artists and stuff performing down there. So it's a lot of talk and, di and discussion on that area there, but rather than trying to just rush into that uh, and design it, um, we are trying to find, and like I said, I don't have a lack of of really good opportunities to put there. And so that and that out parcel are the same thing. We wanna, we wanna be spe pay special attention to that because that, that's all part of the activating that, uh, that access drive. And all open to the public? Yeah, all, all open to the public. And um, I mean, I would say that would count as question number two. What are project amusement recreation uses and the retail shops? I mean, Only have don't a little bit of area. <laughs> still don't sell yourself short, that's something. <laughs> Yeah, and then I don't, also I don't recall another amphitheater in the area like that. The parking for that, um, those restaurant stuff will be basically at the same level. It'll be the top floor of our parking garage. So it'll be, it'll be signed, be, uh, the signage will be pretty clear that that's where the parking is. And then they'll walk into that space and uh, um, through the, um, a corridor in the parking underneath the structure to the, the restaurant. So really we're pretty much screening all the parking from, um, you know, from, it's just not a, a building in a, surface parking okay and, and then providing that within the garage thank you and then the flat stick I'm not familiar with that so is that something open to the public or just special for your residents no it's uh it's open there's two of them in Seattle and there's one <laughs> councilman Cotton knows 
Um, there's one in Kirkland also, but it's just a gathering place for young people. It's really a really fun. Place. Open to the public. Open to the public. Another option here, you're selling yourself short. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have. So start bragging about <laughs> that. And then. Um, okay, can I brag? Because that 2030 yeah. vision you guys had at the workshop, we won the 2020 vision on that back then. So. Okay, good job. <laughs> um, I really do wish this looked more like the Mill Creek Town Center, where your other apartments are. Um, I understand, I hear what you're saying about the financial side of it. Um, I just know that other communities are still being creative, even with the problems of online retail sales. They're still being creative and doing cool things. I just hope that you guys will prove me wrong and do something very creative. Um, as far as the apartments being... Um, market rate to me I mean I know that we need I, I know that it's it's popular to say that we need um, affordable housing um, but I know Linwood has a lot of affordable housing and I also know that we need all kinds of housing badly in Linwood a variety of housing so all kinds of housing so I'm excited for all kinds of housing so I appreciate that um, if I could talk with Scott, Scott, thank you again, all respect to Home Depot. It's not sexy. Cody, you can, uh, quote me on that. Do you have any pull with Cracker Barrel? Cause I think Cracker Barrel is pretty fun to be in that, in that, in that restaurant space there. That parcel is Steve, so I'm no, going to defer just, to <laughs> Cracker Barrel, when you find out how many parking stalls they want on surface, you won't want Cracker Barrel there. It's for their, their, they for their yeah. motor homes and things? Okay. Um, I'm serious about that, though. But um, And then Scott. Um, Thinking about, well, I'm not going to go on about the rooftop, I guess. Um, I think summer concerts on the roof sound really cool, but um, there's not much I can say about that. I, I just wish it was different. Um, all due respect to the good Home Depot. Then, let's see. I think that's it for now. I'll let somebody else speak if I think of something else. Thank you. Council Member Hurst. Great, thank you. Um, question on the Wakefield property, um, the 500 units. So how is that gonna be divided? Do you know as far as one bedroom, two bedroom? Yeah, it's a, I don't, I mean, it's all in our application and stuff like that, I don't have it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's divided it's between efficiency units, uh, one bedroom, two bedroom, one baths, two bedroom, two baths, three bedroom. Uh, I don't know if it's in oh, this particular one, but in our PDR application that we have with the city. No, it's in small print here. Yeah, no, that wasn't designed. <laughs> I figured, I don't know how much Got information it. you guys get before the meetings. Okay, no, that's great. Um, and then uh, I know it's uh, it's popular to say from this dais that Linwood has lots of affordable housing, but really according to the Snowmage Housing Consortium, we're short two to 3,000 units. So uh, I think part of our vision has to include that. Um, but I agree, we need to have all kinds of housing. And um, I think that's something that this council needs to take up real soon. Um, and then as far as the, so I was trying to figure out, where is the amphitheater? I was trying to find that. If you look, uh, well, in that particular, it's like across from that built white building that's kind of illustrated there on the other side of the street in front of our, um, what it's kind of our leasing area also. We're gonna have a business center there. So it's about midway um, on the west side of the access drive. Okay. You'll see kind of the stair steps down and there's different um, views of it in those sheets on the landscape plans. All right. Yeah, it's right there in the dark area. And it, I have to clarify from Scott, it really wasn't designed for movies. Uh, <laughs> To not, you know, there may be an opportunity for that, but it was maybe more designed for outdoor concerts and 
and uh, those kind of activities. Right here. Yeah, right there. Okay. And then on um, the Home Depot um, handout, and this is probably going to be to, to Mr. Hall, the the signage, does, does, does that all comply with current sign ordinance or we it's, yeah i can clarify on that so yeah. the the signage that was presented in the powerpoint presentation um specifically with regards to the pole sign we do not allow pole signs in this location and we um kirk rappy planner and i have spoken with the signage company that was hired by home depot and they're full fully aware of the types of ground and monument signage so the one that's represented in this particular yeah. slide is incorrect so okay. yeah that's that's it, resolved okay didn't know we had done a change or not um and i think i think uh, that's it for my scribbling so yeah we're good councilmember cotton thank you your honor look out gentlemen i'm an engineer so i apologize ahead of time um <laughs> the the total number of units we're looking at the cover page here the the a triple zero um it says your your net units is 503 but when i add up the four buildings count it's 805 508 it, uh, it should be 500 our our architect sometimes shows 503 and uh, he maybe we need to have an engineer do the math but yeah. um it's it's 500 units <laughs> okay, 500 units yeah. is your net. Okay, and and then when I look up the composition of the units, um, I counted only uh, about 46 three-bedroom units. Is it from f from your uh, market experience? Uh, what is what constitutes the modern family that's re that's renting from? Your properties these days to you well i don't i yeah i can't really speak for necessarily for i don't, I don't know the term modern family but uh, we in a usually in a project like this um you, you're like if you go to redmond or bellevue or something like that, you you very rarely find three bedrooms um, right. in fact our average square footage is about 888 square feet if you go to any project in redmond it averages about 730 square feet and the reason ours goes up is we're trying to provide the three bedroom units because you don't have to go very far north and you'll see a higher percentage of that. But this is what they call the urban suburban and you just, you find more people that are, you're gonna find a lot of singles that wanna live here, uh, couples that uh, take the bus and eventually light, we're building for light rail. Um, and so three bedrooms just become, and I think what happens too is the average, you get up the rents to the point where you could buy a house and you know, um, and so it's just a, our marketing people have kind of researched around and they find that, the, that there's a, there's a three-bedroom market, but it's limited. And so you don't want to overbuild and just have them sit there. You'd rather have them, you know, fall and meet with the market demand, which is more of the smaller units. Okay. I think Director Kleitsch would like to add to that. Very good. Thank you. Director Kleitsch, please. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, 500 is capped environmentally. Okay. So through their environmental impact statement, that was 500 that was identified in there. So it's not over 500. Okay. Excellent. Um, and just from a, a, the site improvement standpoint, it, it had been mentioned only a couple times and, and we've kind of, I think, skipped over it. There's the connection between this property and the inner urban. Is that, um, is that specifically driven largely by this residential build out and the, and the, desire to create that multimodal connection? Yeah, we were, uh, um, that was part of the EIS and the improvements that were required. And it's more, um, it, you know, it's more, we feel like it's more the residential units or the tenants there that are going to be using that trail than probably somebody shopping at Home Depot. Um, but so that's kind of the development agreement was written, you know, more gear in that trail to our permit versus Home okay. Depot. Okay. No, it's going to be pumping a, bunch of two by fours over their shoulders yeah. uh that's what home depot told me yeah. <laughs> same thing <laughs> some bicycle trailers maybe get set up um if i may uh that also goes back to the original eis okay uh because uh the uh, sidewalk around 33rd was made wider so people could come down out of the neighborhoods and people that lived at this property and housing could then connect right to the trail 
Okay. So that's why that sidewalk's wider, and that's why this is the last piece to connect it up to the trail. Thank you. Um, and then lastly, just to tie in on the the rooftop parking uh, alternative uses discussion. Uh, it's an it's an open air parking, but would would using this even under some kind of temporary use permit or however that mechanism is, would using the rooftop of uh, should Home Depot decide that they wanted to rent out or make available to for some kind of community event the rooftop would it trigger some kind of additional space uses where it wouldn't just be a parking lot or it would be an assembly type occupancy I mean but it, it's outside so I don't know what that how does that work or do you know I know it's kind of a I do not know I know we build the uh, type M um, okay. so uh, whether or not it would require some other type of design I would have to check with the architect unless staff knows Does anybody staff know what that like it's outdoor parking so is it even feasible okay maybe it's a I know it's a little bit of a hot seat question so uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, you'd mentioned a flat stick or a tenant like flat stick uh, being is is that the southeast tenant the one kind of right off yeah, if you uh, Todd I don't know if you can pull the site plan back up please yeah if you look at uh, it's, there's one with that shows the commercial space I don't know if you have it but anyway it's a if you look at the middle drive that acts that goes west that did go west you went way <laughs> too far west <laughs> yes. Is it the one kind of right in the middle of the property? So if you go in the middle, yeah, if you yep. were driving, okay. the ones just to the north, there's a there's about a 14,000, 15,000 square foot area. Okay. Uh, yeah, it'd be all the way at the towards the Costco. So right up there, it's kind oh. of L-shaped yes. right there. So in that, we've actually been approached by the broker uh, and combining that with a restaurant user, I guess, that they tie in with. And um, we love the idea. Um, yeah. And it fits with what we're trying to do um, all along there for the, with all of those tenants uh, that we have there. Um, you just have to balance out the parking, you know, because there's just big parking users. And yeah. uh, so um, it's just going to be a combination of um, hopefully we can get the restaurants in there. But along the Costco side up there, we'll probably be more of service oriented um, that are facing that way just because there's not really a lot of activation going on out there. There's screening and stuff, but all that whole area there too, as you go wrap around the corner, that's all glass. Uh, all there. So it, there's a, 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 when you drive down there, it's gonna be a real streetscape. Uh, so we kind of get the best of both worlds. We get the commercial feel as you drive down the access drive, but if you go up to Vancouver or whatever, I spent, I uh, opened up the US office for the largest multifamily builder up there. They, they really build the residential from the ground up. You very rarely see the, the off or the commercial tucked underneath it. And a lot of times it's vacant if it's not in the right location. Here we have a op great opportunity because of the anchors around it. Yeah. Um, but I think we're mixed, I think we're matching the best of both worlds. We get the commercial feel, but uh, when, you, when you're living there, you feel like you're in, in a residential unit, not just above a, a commercial space yeah. there, so. And could you just um, briefly maybe elaborate or summarize the, the kind of the list of amenities that, because you've kind of mentioned dog park and open space and uh, fire pit and some kind of indoor amenity. Could you maybe kind of elaborate like, uh, is it kind of a gym, community kitchen? All of the things you just said. It's uh, so if you go down to the, starting at 80, 184th there is where our dog park is. And we're still trying to figure out if we can open that up to the public um, as okay. people are walking along there. It's just, it's a management thing. We're just started, we're doing our first one up in uh, Marysville right now. Okay. And, uh, but then as you go there, you got a lot of raised planter areas, a lot of kind of sitting areas. And then we get into more of the, um, kind of the uh, um, areas where you can have the outdoor picnic area gathering. We want to be able to have maybe multiple events going on at one time. So if someone's using the rec building in the summer, you're not blocked off from having other events. And so things like cornhole toss and miniature golf, and that's not just, you know, that's, that, 
that's I'm going to make it, trying to make a signature out of those that area there to make it really, uh, but it have a lot of activities and we also we're going to have kids there so we're going to have play areas that they're going to have the tot lots and stuff that's that's kind of a city requirement anyway so it's just maybe and you got people living above it so you have to pay special attention to the noise and that kind of thing but I think our uh, uh, landscape architect uh, Tom Rangsdorf did a fantastic job of laying this out um, and. So and I, I think we've packed about as much activity and we can in there and balancing out the green space um, and the plantings and all that. Because you want to soften that, uh, that hardscape that you have there. Okay, thank you. That's all the questions for me. Thank you all for taking the, the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> Council, any other questions? Yes, Council Member Hurst. Just one last, in the Home Depot um, PowerPoint or handout, the project schedule, is that uh, still doable where you're going to be grand opening on November 5th, 2020. I'll, I'll stand there for you. And then uh, also for the, I'm confused. So it says limit place phase one. I thought we were talking phase two, but are you being going to be done by June 21? Yeah, we're looking. Um, I'll let Scott speak to Home sure. Depot, but um, I think. A lot of this depends on how tonight goes also so <laughs> as far as scheduling but um, where our plan is to build our whole garage at the same time and then the first two buildings um, the first phase what we call building one and two which are the southernmost buildings that it's about a 24 month build um, and then we'll hope to build around as as we finish up buildings so it'll just minimize the you know kind of the um, impact of the especially the Home Depot and you know, construction going on and trying to we're really trying to look at most efficient way of doing that because um, that's a big garage that we have going up there and it's going to take a while to but our plan is just there uh, I think we're talking to starting around the middle of July uh, um, they might even be able to start earlier our objective is to start earlier the schedule up here tonight is actually what we presented to the uh, real estate committee um, so that's our GO that we have to make um, so we'd like to make a GO grand opening sooner than that one we'd like to start construction as soon as we can to get um, through grading before the bad weather yeah. comes in and can I just make one, um, I, I know developers aren't, don't have the best rap, but the amount of work that it goes into pulling off a development like this to get the capital and the, to, you know, people like Home Depot and get everything, the permits, working with staff. I mean, it's a lot of work and it's all kind of right there right now. Um, and I think for the school district standpoint, if it, you know, I've worked with Home Depot and they are very much schedule oriented and so I would just, make that a special emphasis that um, if you if, if if you like what you see I mean now is a good time it takes a long time to regroup and start again and all that stuff so I just um, um, it's 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 really it takes a lot of it takes a it takes a village <laughs> to pull these things off council anything else okay one more council one more first for director Kleiss so um, we have all these projects going on, and I know we're, uh, we're hiring people. How are we doing staff-wise to be able to facilitate, you know, really what is uh, aggressive as far as Home Depot? Well, we, uh, as you know, are going through uh, changes in DBS, all for the good. Uh, we have new building official, very uh, efficiency and uh, um, effectiveness oriented, and right now, we are hiring staff up, but we're also contracting out. So I think that we're in good shape to handle it in the interim. Ultimately, uh, the goal is to uh, staff up, uh, not have contracts, but uh, um, in the interim with contracts, we'll, we'll be fine. Council, anything else? One more? All right, then at this time, since all citizens wishing to speak have had an opportunity to do so, and since city councils had the opportunity to ask questions regarding the testimony provided, it's appropriate to close the public comment portion of this hearing. 
unless the council wishes to take action to keep the hearing open or to continue the hearing to a future meeting the hearing should be considered closed and audience I thank you again for being here tonight so at this point I would invite the council to make a motion and begin discussion and deliberation Councilmember Cotton said three 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 seven mm -hmm. all right I move ordinance number 3337, an ordinance of the city of Linwood, Washington, adopting the Linwood Place project phase <coughs> two development agreement as development regulations for the Linwood Place site and providing for severability and effective date and summary publication. Second. And would you like to speak to that? I would. Um, I understand that this, you know, I was in the audience when I first saw this phase two and it was very much more the, the Mill Creek Town Center. Um, and I was very excited about that. Um, I also know that times change and that um, the landscape of what is economically viable um, changes with that. Um, I'm excited about uh, the Home Depot uh, coming in because it is a good mid-range job. It's not um, office white collar work, but it is definitely a step up the ladder and it's um, something you know kind of uh, I think a step above service level uh, kind of employment um, I'm excited about the housing coming in because um, understanding market pressures I think as we as we there's two ways to create affordable housing in my mind one way is to creative incentive create incentive and subsidies and the other way is to make sure that the market can produce the housing so that um, the the laws of supply and demand can also make the housing more affordable. So I think that this, uh, while we talk about doing um, the first uh, with policy, I think that we can also help speed along uh, bringing more uh, housing online, which will help with the demand equation. So I'm excited about this. Um, I, you know, in a perfect world, you know, I'd love to see some 30-story buildings down there, but um, I also know that Lynn was not there yet. Um, we're getting there. So um, I think this is a step in the right direction. So I'm in support of this. Thank you. Council President. Thank you. Uh, before I start my comments, I will very reluctantly. I'll move up a little bit because it's on. <laughs> I will very reluctantly uh, move to extend to the end of item 100 new business. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Uh, I, I, as well, am quite excited about this. Um, I've been passing by an empty property for several years now. Um, and I, I know it's not a bad property. Actually, it's a very good property. Uh, I think the problem is that what we had as a vision before is not something that will work now. Otherwise, we would have a number of people that <laughs> would say, we want to do just what we had planned previous. Um, and I think what is being proposed now will work very well. Uh, I think if they decided to put a water park in, someone would say, that's too much water use. If they decided to put sand volleyball courts, that's too much sand, we can't do that we're not gonna be able to make every single person happy with what goes in as a development. And I think that this is something that we can have in the area because I think it fits very well. Um, you know, using that as a huge recreation area now would seem kind of odd when you have Costco on one side and the mall on the other. Um, but having a, a mixed use where you also have those amenities, where you have a amphitheater, where you have uh, a dog park and whether or not that's open to the public, the people that live in that area and, and rent from or, or own or however it's set up to, to live in those areas will want those spaces for their pets. And I think that is very beneficial. Uh, and if you go up the street, up 184th, yes, it's a big hill, great exercise. When you get to the top of that, you have Pioneer Park. So there's, there's green space in the area as well. Uh, so I don't think that there is anything, at least in my view, that would be detrimental to the city. I think all of the things that we're presented with will benefit not only the city, they'll benefit the school district and benefit people that are coming to live in Linwood 
and especially as was mentioned with light rail coming, you know, we're going to need more area, more livable area, and I think that's going to contribute to that very well. So I will definitely be supporting this project. So thank you very much. Councilmember Hurst, did you give me the slide? Okay, yes. Councilmember Hurst. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's not a project to jump up and down about, but um, let's face it, it's, um, we have one big gray box store way in the back, and we're just having a nice orange one towards the front. And, um, you know, the, the concern really is, it, for me, is, uh, is the housing, and, you know, we as a council need to, to, yeah, we need to figure out what our vision is and put it into policy, and we really need to look at housing. And I know our staff is creating a white paper, but I would say that it, this housing policy needs to be driven by council. We need to somehow do a round table. We need to get to it. Um, but I think this project fits into the area that it's there. Um, if it was, if we were plucking this thing down uh, in the city center, I don't think it would work, but we, you know, it's next to a mall, it's next to a Costco, and um, I think it's got some good amenities and um, look forward to, to seeing it built because, yeah, it's been an empty space for a long time. Thank you. Any other council comments? Yeah, council member sessions. Thank you. Um, I think these are going to be beautiful apartments uh, and I don't see a problem with that. Uh, but how to be creative with that space, with the multi-use. Um, it's, and, and I understand the Hoban Depot, but I've been, I just don't love it. I, I more than don't love it. I really wish we could have done something different here. And um, just out of principle, I mean, with all due respect, I'm going to have to vote no, um, knowing that that's not going to stop anything from happening, which is, which is good. But um, I just want to be proved wrong. The retail and mixed use and the amphitheater and the hopefully a variety of restaurants, sidewalk cafe type thing maybe that can be done there would be worth it. It would be really cool. And I just hope that can happen. I, I, think, I think it will. I think there will be some fun things that will be able to go in there and you'll prove me wrong and that will be great. Thank you for all due respect to all of you. Thank you for doing this and your hard work. Any other council comments? Okay, okay. We'll do the roll call mm -hmm. vote, please. Council Vice President Frizzell? Yes. Council President Goodwin? With all due respect, yes. Council Member Hurst? Yes. Council Member Ross? Yes. Council Member Sessions? No. Council Member Sutton? Yes. Council Member Cotton? Affirmative. Six yes, one no. Thank you, ordinance number 337 passes six to seven. Thank you. Thank you very much. Six no, to one. Also, what did I just Thanks say? for the dialogue. <laughs> I've never had been able to do this before. That's really, mm -hmm. really, uh, really, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, council, we do not have an executive session. Is there any new business that needs to come forward? No. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you.